All right. We are continuing the tradition here of being opponent, my chatting partner, being fashionably late, forcing me to mutter for a few minutes about God knows what. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully he didn't uh, get his times wrong, but I don't think so. We already had a time exchange, a time uh, mix-up. Not a mix-up, but he couldn't do the normal time, so I changed it to an hour sooner. But I hope he doesn't, like... He, I'm sure he remembers I'm in Dublin and not, like, 11 p.m. American time or something. Anyways, we'll give him a few more minutes. Five, ten minutes. I'm sure he's around. He's probably powdering his nose. And, uh, yes, you are going to be delighted to hear the future predictions for the world. I'm sure you're just hanging on the edge of your seats to hear it from two art school. I was going to say dropouts. We're not dropouts. Art school survivors. Who uh, nevertheless probably have. I, mean, I know for my part, I have an extremely accurate. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, my God, as it, ha as it unfolds before you. You'd be like, that fucking Brandon guy. Holy shit. How did he know? <laughs> So, uh, yes, very fashionable. Yes, yes, what was his, what, what was on YT is nostalgic. Yeah, I even said, like, is it okay having you on YouTube? And uh, I assume it is. I mean, who cares? Sure it is. So he's making his triumphant return, I, although I'm sure he's been on other shows, maybe. Um, let me see here. There's no sign of him yet. Anyways, we'll see. I hope he didn't mix up the times. I did that once recently to somebody, <laughs> and the guy still isn't talking to me. And he was all excited to have me on. Apparently, I like changed his life with my art book. Oh, this he used to say this. He wouldn't even talk to me now. And he he wanted me on a Twitter space, I think. And again, it was a time zone mix up completely. Although you know he was a bit vague about it, and I was just completely in the wrong time zone. He sent me the link, and I was like, oh yeah, nice, great. But it was like the link to go live like immediately. I thought he was like giving to me a day early or something. And I, I realized later on, I completely missed the whole thing. It was all about me, like in my book. And they actually talked for an hour about it. But some of them were like bitter and like bad mouthing me. <laughs> so that was that sucked. And then he still won't even talk to me uh, afterwards, which is pretty lame. I, it's an innocent screw up. You know, I mean, come on. But uh, well, the end of everything. Hello. And it's just me. You're all excited, and it's all me on my own. Where is Mr. Wells? Oh, he's seeing those messages. He's doing something. Perhaps he's having... Uh, oh, he said, oh, with an exclamation mark. <laughs> he's surprised. Oh, here he is. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry, I lost track of time. I got uh, engrossed in something and just forgot that we were about to do this. So I oh my greatly apologize. Have you been uh, just, uh, I think the word is vamping for six minutes. Is it? Is that what you call it? That sounds gay. Gay the as hell. There's a word that, yeah, it does sound quite gay, but I, well, needs must, I suppose. Um, yeah. It, it's just uh, a term. Anyway. Needs must. You must act gay. <laughs> vamping. <laughs> I felt a bit gay there, yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, we're okay. Everything's fine, yeah. Everything's fine. And I was just uh, warming them up for your your uh, tell all, right. your searing into the divining the future, studying the entrails. How are you going to lay it all out? And how right. I'm going to lay it all? Well, hold on a second, and I will just uh, share this link now. Uh, I'll tell people that we're live, live now. All right, so you want me to give predictions about what is going to happen over, what, the next 10 years, 20 years, 50? <laughs> well, I, I wasn't, I didn't think that far into it, but yes. <laughs> That's well, pretty important. <laughs> let's uh, say, well, I mean, whatever, whatever, you know, and say, um, yes, say major events of the next Go as far as 20, sure. Why not? Oh, why not? Even further, maybe even 50. If it's but you don't have to go into like details of each of them. Like, I mean, it's kind of like 
weather versus climate, isn't it? It's one it, to predict what's going to happen in the next two years is actually very difficult. But to predict what's going to happen over the next 50 years is actually a bit easier because you think, well, there are things that are going to have to happen sooner or later. Mm. There are things that are going to have to be resolved. Exactly. They're going to have to reach ahead uh, exactly. or they're going to have to get rid of. Um, they're going to have to be replaced. It's just, and I don't know when exactly, but it's going to have to happen within the next 50 years. Um, exactly. So you're so, exercising yeah, prescience. Yeah. There, right there, you're exercising perfect prescience. Yes. This is what we want. What you see is absolute, uh, you know, things that almost cannot be avoided. Like you can never say anything with 100% certainty. We all know that, but like we are going to assume for the for the sake of the argument. Of course, argument, of course. And right. actually, I should give a, a, a disclaimer here, or a, what would be the word? An ap apology. Um, a, a year ago, I wrote a, a, I published an essay saying that Scottish independence was an inevitability. So it's just a matter of when. The momentum is obviously there and it's building and all this. And within a few weeks, the whole thing was done. It was just over. <laughs> oh, uh, it had been That's growing bad. for like 10, 15, well, 20, no, 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 20 years, 20 years um, since yeah, devolution. Right. And um, and then suddenly it was over. And I thought, right. well, fuck, yeah, that, that's so annoying. <sighs> um, and now I look like a tit and my my predictive ability looks in you know, in the dust. Um, <laughs> that is pretty bad. It's but like the, I'm putting you on this on the spot here. No one actually. I mean, you. I, I do believe you do have some divining powers already. You made some prescient comments. You know, no one expects <laughs> you to be to get it 100 percent right anyway. So yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, an, it's an exercise. It's it's an exercise. It's a fantasy in a way. Like I yes. don't know. I can't say what I'm going to say is is accurate either. Although I feel a certain confidence about some of it for sure. But anyways. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, before, it's, before, let me. I, let me, yeah, I didn't. What, let me just ask you. What what did uh, explode the Scottish thing? Because I, I I forget. I'm not sure I even oh, knew what. It's. I think it's it... actually very simple. It it all came down to the the individuals involved. So, the SNP just uh, the the head honchos there, the leadership echelon got screw, fucked or 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 destroyed themselves. Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, I don't know if it's legal to say. She seems to have been involved in chicanery with her hu husband. Um, so it's... she had to step down. She claimed it wasn't about that, but I think it must have been really. And um, and then meantime, the guy who replaced her, Hamza Yousaf, is uh, loathsome. And that, I think, really took the just the wind out of the sails of the independence movement. Meantime, Alex Salmon, she had stabbed him in the back before uh, Sturgeon. So there was nobody left who was charismatic, uh, admired enough by the public to carry this. Um, and oh, and yeah. as I said, they've replaced them, them, uh, her with someone, a guy who is just disgusting uh, and clearly <laughs> despises uh, Scotland and the Scottish people. He's not oh, even Scottish. Yeah, he's, of course way. not. Of course, he's not even European. <laughs> and if so, she's their if she's their example of a charismatic leader, like holy shit. Well, I know, would... but but that's the thing. I mean, I think she's awful as well. But you've got to hand it to her; she did carry that for that the independence cause for um, what was that about eight years, nine, uh, something like that. Um, and it wasn't going anywhere. It, it, I mean, it was going; it was up and up and up. It was doing yeah. well. So yeah, yeah, I find her dull as hell. I find oh. her plebeian, but she was good at what she set out to do. And I don't really think she set out to do anything but this. I think this was all she ever was all about. And uh, and and she she was she was doing well. I do think that if things had continued as they were, let's say at the start of last year, then mm -hmm my prediction would have been borne out. They, they, of course, everyone could always say that, but it's like a black swan event that just came out of nowhere, fucked the party, and uh, and put it on a completely different trajectory. So now it's basically heading for oblivion. Uh, so Labour... Ba basically, basically, that he would, basically that he was put in place over... Uh, he was basically because this guy was put in place, this this Yusuf guy. And who was yeah, in charge of that? Like, were they voted in, or like, what? How did how it was that work? the? Well, it was the party themselves. Uh, I, and I'm not going to uh, point fingers at who was responsible because I have no idea, but I think right. that whoever was responsible, either it was accidentally 
suicidal for the party, or it was deliberately suicidal for the party. Oh, right. oh. One way or the other, it's the party has committed suicide by having him as leader. And as I say, they will now get destroyed by Labour at the next election, and that will be that. Um, now, you could th there are other things involved here. You could say that the British establishment was always in charge, really, and they're orchestrating all of this. Maybe... Um, but I don't I don't really care to go into that. All I'm saying is, yeah. had things continued as they were at the start of last year, it, I, I believe Scotland would still now be on well on the, the path towards independence. And by the way, this isn't even something that I necessarily want. I'm just saying. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. You don't, yeah. you don't care, do you? Yeah, that's funny. I, I'm very nuanced and ambivalent about it. It's, yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. But I think yeah. that my point of my perspective at that time a year ago was that well this is what the scottish people want so and i do think it will be a mistake because they'll go straight into the eu but mm. that's it's no longer for me to say I, I don't they will not identify with me i don't identify with them particularly at least certainly not politically so mm. This just not, you know. Yeah, I, so that was funny. I, I didn't know all the details. Maybe I did, and I forgot because it was so. It's one of these polit political uneventful collapses that just kind of, you know, something peters out like that. Nothing too dramatic, unless her scandal that she was involved in was. Well, it was. I'm, I assume it's financial and not like sexual. She looks like a lesbian. That's the thing about her. She's so hideous, and her hair, like you know, if you're going to present a woman as one of these things, it doesn't have to be beautiful, <laughs> but. God. Well, really, though, and like uh, I mean, she looks like, I don't, she looks angry. I, She's like an angry and stern, and her little helmet hair is just like ridiculous. I know it's it's awful. I look. I don't know how. I I don't know what the legal situation is with what you're allowed to say because there was actually oh, a really? a super injunction. Uh, but uh, look, all I'm going to okay. say is I think it was mainly legal. That's that's what I'll say. Because okay, that's, that's fair. That sounds fair. <laughs> um, very different. Very different. Yeah. But I think it is the truth that it was mainly de uh, legal. The, the, this embezzlement or whatever. The, 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 it seems to be. It's like this the lowest, most tawdry, sort of predictable thing. That uh, it's almost disappointing. You'd hope that it was something more exotic, but it seems to have just been financial embezzlement. So that's just mm -hmm. screwed this historical trajectory for this country. That uh, well, for Scotland. I mean. How the hell do you... Well, anyway, um, so that's that. I just wanted to say that as a sort of... Um, uh, a warning? Yeah. Like, I... It, it, predicting anything like this is, is difficult. But what I would say is, it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it reignited again, the independence cause. Because I do think oh, yeah. that there clearly is an instinct there. That's how it happened in the first place. Uh, there's an instinct there for independence even if it is just derived from resentment towards the english doesn't really matter it's still the same it's going to lead to the same thing anyway so that could easily be reignited at any time and it might yeah. well be that the whole thing is just theater where the british establishment are all powerful in this i'm not saying they are i'm just saying this is a possibility that the british establishment are really orchestrating all of this and they just decide to let the scots have this pipe dream for a while uh, and then we'll uh, pull the plug on it when it's appropriate when it's convenient for us uh, who knows i don't know but mm. i'm just saying it looked bloody well to me as if this was i, I do think that the scottish people want independence that's all i'm saying um yeah I, i'm almost i almost find it hard to believe there is a functioning british establishment in a way like their own part of the uh, part of the country is so out of control and sort of seemingly controlled by dark financial figures who really have no interest in who goes independent or not, or not, or have any interest in the country at all. Like yeah, yeah I agree. Them, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that how much. I agree. So maybe happened. it's all just kabuki theater. It's just meaningless. Yeah, I don't know. Be. Um, could be. That's a, that's an interesting part of it all, though. Is like, what will happen to Scotland or England in the next few years? Will 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 there be an attempt to? Will it break up even more? And you know what would happen with the likes of Northern Ireland, even and stuff like well, that. Well, indeed, that's a, and that's a whole separate, equally eventful story there. But Northern mm. Ireland and and well, yeah. the whole so what what used to be called the Irish question, uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, the the mm. whole separate story. But 
I, and I don't want to go into that because I don't know about that. I do think right. the way things are going, it looks like, I mean, just the way that things in general in the world are going, we seem right. to believe in self-determination now to some extent, as long as it, or, or at least the veneer of self-determination. So uh, I can't see them avoiding giving the Irish a referendum on this forever. Eventually there's going to have to be another, uh, well, they're going to, it's just going to have to happen. The, the Irish and the Northern Irish will have to be given a chance to say what they want. Uh, that that seems inevitable. Now, whether it's rigged or not is another matter. But I yeah. think the appearance of democracy demands that something like that happens sooner or later. Wouldn't you say so? The appearance of democracy. I don't know. I feel like that's fading all the time. Uh, I'd have to think about that. You caught me off guard there. The appearance of democracy, maybe. Well, the, maybe the, the appearance. The, the, the illusion the appearance. of democracy. I mean, the, the illusion. The, they're supposed to believe in it now. So, well, okay, then, can you give these people self determination or not? I mean, it seems to be pointing in one that they're going to have to be given a referendum. Yeah, it's weird. The Northern Irish seem to consider themselves really their own country altogether, in between the two. And that's the way everyone kind of sees it, at least from here, I can, from what I can make of it, for the most part. Like, there's people that are, you know, more ravingly so this way or that way, but however they want to run the place or what they want to do, I don't know. There's not a lot of Irish left, I think, even, like, I know a lot of, like, I have a lot of friends who get drunk and start singing IRA songs, let's say. <laughs> but they, and they don't give a shit. But they, they don't want to reclaim the North. They don't really care, from what I can see. Right. I'm the foreigner here. I don't know. Like, this is my anecdotal experience with it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, who knows about that? <laughs> that's a whole other it, thing. But that's, that's, just... not, that's fairly inconsequential in the events I was thinking we would we would cover, in a way. Because there's going to be all kinds of, As far as I can see, there's going to be splits and rearrangements all over the place. Well, the, this is the thing, though. I mean, to what extent are these old identities going to matter, say, 100 years from now? Is anyone going to yeah. even care about Ulster... Uh, Holyrood, Edinburgh, the, the Scottish identity. <laughs> yeah, or, or I mean, you're, always, you're, you're... it could just be swept away in the, 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 the with the, the the waves of massive demographic change from the global south. Yeah, the fact that this this guy is Yusuf, whatever the fuck his name is, right there, tells you a lot. Like the Scottish independence guy, like he's not Scottish. <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, of course, yeah, he's already not. that way. Yeah, I mean that's really bad. But, uh, <laughs> this is pretty bad. And it's a very strange thing. It's like MAGA, you know, in America, where it's, but it's MUT MAGA. It's multicultural. It's multicolored MAGA. So it's patriotism, but it's, but it's got nothing to do with race. And the Scots have a similar thing. I guess the Irish have a similar thing. Where yeah, we're very patriotic, but we're certainly not racist. Anyone can be Scottish. <laughs> I mean, it's just mental. You know, the Irish don't really believe that so much. I think that's more, you know, I really don't get that so much here. They're a little bit more racist. <laughs> still, <laughs> I think that Scotland is almost the worst for this because it's on the mainland. It's so it's there's a very there's a proximity to, well, Westminster, the BBC, uh, all of that. And yet it feels separate from all of that and, and that it has to prove itself by being more globalistic, more multicultural, more open-minded, more progressive than England. So it just right. goes off the scale. Yeah. It, it's like the Canada syndrome where I'm from Canada. It's like it's, so much of the identity is trying to prove you're not American. And the only way to do it is like, look at us. We don't have guns and we're gayer. Basically, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> that's all they can do because <laughs> they're otherwise fairly not not identical. Well, I'm, Canadians and Americans really are very close. Scottish are uh, quite a bit different from English, but you know, very yeah. similar still. You know, to uh, you know, someone from it, it's a similar dynamic where the Scots are desperate to distinguish to, to differentiate themselves from the English. Um, yeah, I think that's the key, and yeah, they are, and I think it drives them to crazy things like this whole trans stuff that's going on uh, yeah. and the hate speech law which just came in is really I think more draconian than the equivalents in England um, right and uh, you've got various other things the, 
the, the, the SNP have done. They've destroyed the education system. The Scottish education system used to actually be something quite to be proud of as a country. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just it's just tumbled down the international league tables in the last 10 or 15 years. That's um, really sad. That's considering it, the it, amount of in, inventors you had and stuff. Like for to specifically have so many people, if you look at the list of inventions, scientific inventions and innovations, the Scottish feature on there quite uh, ab abnormally for the size of the nation and the population, et cetera. Yeah, that was so some kind of whatever was going on before, some uh, some kind of work ethic uh, aimed at science or something. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real shame because you really were notable in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to say there, but I, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, separate from what we were going to talk about. Yeah, so yeah, sure. one thing, yeah. I mean, I, I I think for for one thing, I think that AI. See, this has been the case, the trouble for the last ten years about trying to predict the future is that there are very different possible futures, sort of competing at the same time. So yes, AI could revolutionize everything. Or right. the third world could destroy us and turn us into the third world, and that's a extremely different possible futures. Uh, <laughs> and there might be some hellish melding of the two. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah, a hellish melding is probably the most likely. I, I mean, I, I'll tell you one thing that I do think is going to happen is that class is going to be replaced. And this is a dreadful thing that I'm about to see. Oh, God. Very, <laughs> very, very red pilt. What I'm about to see. I oh, think Jesus. that. Okay. I think that social class is going to be replaced by racial admixture. So it's so, uh, that like the lower class whites are are going to mix with, you know, uh, and and if you can prevent yourself and your progeny from doing that, then they will have a tremendous advantage in the future. Because just because everyone is implicitly instinctively racist. And I don't like I don't like I don't like that term obviously cuz it's a stupid term, but Basically, everyone does care about. I mean, I, I just saw, you know, I just saw about half an hour ago on uh, Twitter. I saw this clip of an Indian guy touching a blonde, like I don't know, she's nine years, ten years old, maybe. This wee girl, and uh, in Italy, <laughs> at a museum, and he gave her a flower and then sort of stroked her hair. And this is a grown guy, like a 30, 40 years old, and. Uh, it's and she was the sort of Nordic, you know, the, the archetype, uh, straight blonde hair. Um, this, I, I just, I basically think that everyone, everyone wants to be us, and I'm not saying that I'm the Nordic archetype, just to be clear. <laughs> um, but I, I think that everyone aspires to the Northern European, especially the Northern, just especially with the women. It's just the it's every guy on earth wants ideally to procreate with a Nordic woman. And uh, likewise, and I think this is borne out with the statistics, women of every race want to end up with a, a Nordic sort of guy. Um, just that seems to be the case. Right. Um, with the possible exception of black women, <laughs> which is a kind of hilarious. <laughs> are, they, are they an exception, really? I didn't know that. I oh, think I they know. are. I think they're the only ones who who don't want white guys. <laughs> I just think it's just hilarious. It's like they're not bright enough to realize that this would be advantageous. <laughs> Are you sure about this? It's just that they maybe they feel they I can't. I believe so. If you look at the um, OK Cupid, because like uh, black guys, don't, black guys certainly don't feel that way towards white women. That's for sure. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, no! Right. No. Okay. Um, OK Cupid. Okay. OK Cupid. They say black guys only, is it? I think if I uh, this is a oh, tangent. I I think from memory. Everyone wants white women. Everyone <laughs> wants white men. Yeah, there's a pain in the ass. If they only knew what a pain in the ass. But yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants white men except for black women. So the Indians, the Asians, the, uh, the and, and so forth, they all, I, their ideal is a white guy, except for the black women, and their ideal is a black guy. Really? Uh, I think I so. Know. I think so. I mean, that's just from memory. But anyway, the point is that I think there is an instinctual of understanding of hier a hierarchy, whether you actually agree with it or not. It just seems to be what is borne out by people's behavior, their natural choices. So um, 
I think that in the future, what you're going to have is a, I mean, cl class in terms of like class uh, distinctions of old have already gone. I mean, nobody cares about this kind of thing anymore. Oh, but, I don't know. Okay, go well, on. But yeah, finish your case. Make your case, and I'll make my complaints. It, I mean, look, they care about it a hell of a lot less than they did fifty years ago or even twenty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Surely you would agree with they that. They claim not to care politically and so forth. They don't care. But yeah, go no, go on. I don't want to. I don't. Well, interrupt. my point is that I think that will be supplanted by a, a much more, frankly, <sighs> brutal racial judgment of each other uh the the mixed race kids will not that there, there'll be i can easily imagine people thinking right well he's he he's not very fair darling so don't date him go with that nice boy that that boy with the much fairer skin he, he looks like a better a safer bet uh, i can imagine middle class well-meaning parents speaking like this 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And even if it's not said openly, I think, they're, again, their choices will betray their their prejudices um, in a way that they don't just now, because we still there's still the old distinctions. They, they still hang around to some extent. But I think that the more race mixing happens, the more those who have not done it will, will have an advantage. Jesus uh, Christ, you're probably right. This is why yeah, it's good so much because they want as few people to have an advantage as possible. No, that is for quite astute of you. Yeah, to look at it that way. You're right. Over time, over a long period of time. Let me just uh, also say now and preface uh, whatever infantile YouTube censors are observing this. Like, we're not talking about what, what we think is happening now or what we want to happen, even. We're just making Absolutely. Predictions, not. predictions about the future as accurately and uh, honestly as we can. So Absolutely that's, not. That's his uh, assessment. That's his assessment. Yeah, I, I want to yeah make that very clear as well. I mean, I I abhor prejudice and bigotry of every kind, and I'm just <laughs> explaining what I think is going to happen. Yeah, um, I mean, we have to. Surely they can't they can't attack us for for, for for prediction. They can't attack. I mean, probably they can. They could try to, but I mean, fuck fuck them. Well, I hope I hope I don't get your channel shut down. I really I would really oh, hate I don't that. Care. I don't even care. I don't. I do not care. I mean, I care a little bit, but not that much. Okay. Good. Good. Um, so that's one don't, thing. Don't. So to get back to the, the thing, um, AI, if that does keep going, it's going to revolutionize life in a way that I don't think we can even guess at just now. But for example, to know that anything you see, anything you see, no matter how realistic it looks, could just as easily be completely synthetic. Uh, that might be the assumption of people five, ten years from now. Uh, and kids born now might well grow up with that just as an assumption. That absolutely, no matter how realistic it looks, uh, it, it could just very easily be fake, totally fake. Um, and that, what, what implications is that going to have? I, I, as I say, I don't think we can even guess at them. Yeah, I don't think it's it going to be possible hard, really to. I mean, how can you even? What yeah. tool could there be for really knowing for sure? What's real or not? Re reality I mean, and what truth will become. What, what, in, in, it's possible yeah. that reality and truth will become immaterial in a way, or sort of a, a place, a literally like a, I don't know. You, if you cannot tell it, yes, and we're and we're absorbed the way we are in media, like we are now, even more so probably. They've already it, got. It, I mean, they've already got the stuff that can put words in your mouth. They, a, sim, a sample of your voice, a look at your face, that's all the system needs. And then it can synthesize footage of you saying something. And it looks, it already looks very lifelike. Um, two years from now, five years from now, it will be indistinguishable from the real thing. So oh, then, shit. so then, I mean, the sky's the limit at that. I mean, they, they could just decide <laughs> Millennial Woes is going to say, something absolutely egregious um whether he likes it or not <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably, probably will be you probably will be but at the same time yes so you you'll be saying something literally lawfully criminal in something that they can something throw you that, into tartarus yeah something <laughs> that's optimized for whatever legal uh system they want to launch at me right um so whatever the, you know the perfect fodder for it 
who knows? And it's not just me. I shouldn't just use myself. I mean, this could happen to any of us. Mm. Um, True. True. And I, I don't really know how you would, as I say, I, I, what tool would there be that could say one way or the other, like in court, it's fake. How the fuck is that? I don't under. I don't know how it any probably would be a way. Could probably work that out. It, there, the, so. the legality of it, of it would become so complex. You know, someone high profile would be accused, obviously, right off the bat, probably, and it would become. They probably have to enforce some law about it and like outlaw certain kinds of it, or it has to come with a branding or something. I don't know. You're right, though. It's but it, any branding can just be removed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, but legally wise, they would get a headache. The system would get a headache from the legality of it, and they would want to do something. I think, probably. of course, they would. But could they do something, or would would their efforts be futile? I think it might well be. It might well get to the point where they're just going to have to write off footage and audio as a as a legally admissible evidence because it's <laughs> just it's just so un unreliable so that'll free us of the surveillance state right there maybe it might actually <laughs> might undo all of their their cctv <laughs> mm. it <don't>, it'd be <laughs> hilarious inadmissible <laughs> <laughs> totally well, I, as i say i don't really know that this is I, this is why i used the word revolutionary one of the reasons because it's it's a it's a problem that i don't know it's going to disrupt things in such a way that i simply don't know what the, the solution to it will be i don't think we have a solution yet we've never had a problem like this before no it is uh interesting yeah it is very interesting you're right about that for sure and then, and then another similar thing uh, to do with AI is um, the creative potential of it. And again, I have the same scruples that everyone else has about AI imaging. It does disturb me. It does freak me out. And yet, I just have to face the fact that it is going to be tremendously useful for creative people. Um, it's just a fact. So again, you can dis disapprove of it. You can find it disturbing. I kind of, well, I do. But it's uh, still going to happen. And the implications of that are massive because it means that a 15-year-old who knows how to use this software well will be able to compete with Hollywood in everything except, well, even the actors, because he can just fake that. Yeah. So what at that point does Hollywood have to offer and uh, or any any of the established media? The only thing it has is uh, the distribution capability you know, to advertise something. But other than that, nothing, nothing at all. So how would they deal with that? That's right. That would nix all of that. It's funny how like when technology moves along, it just like destroys an entire something that it was, something could be thousands of years old, a, a tradition or an art. <laughs> As it, it's it's, the weird thing is that Hollywood is already dead anyway. Well, it feels yeah. like it's more abundant. Well, it still has power. Made. It still has it still has a lot of power. I see some of these shitty Marvel movies coming out, and it still influences. Oh a lot yeah, of, like, but we, we don't yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. But creatively, it's dead. It's been dead for oh, fuck, twenty yeah, years. No. Oh yeah, certainly since yeah around twenty tens for sure. It was dead. It was dead and done. I think around the twenty tens. I think that's where that's my benchmark for when things really went tits up. That's when I, yeah. you would appreciate this. That's when I first noticed. That uh, that's when I gave up on the BBC, let's say, because I was a big fan of the old BBC stuff, like yourself, all the old Doctor Who, tele, tele, uh, yeah. uh, what do you, what do you call, what do you call them, the video dramas, the uh, yeah, 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 all that, all that shit, right? Yeah. And then I noticed I was still watching them, and I just noticed documentary after documentary was being narrated by some sassy, frumpy feminist who was basically revising the history of every place she was talking about to inject it with feminism or like leftist values. <laughs> I remember like, I saw one yeah. after the other. I saw like I probably saw five in a row, and I was like, okay, that's it. Yeah, I'm never watching another one of these again. <laughs> I, I remember in the mid two thousands there was this trend where some fucking historian would come on and say, "Everything you know about X is wrong." <laughs> oh yeah, that, this is it. Yeah, the revision. And then it was a bit like something like, um, "So actually, you think that the Queen Victoria was very staid and boring, but actually she had a sex life." <laughs> Oh fuck yeah! I, this kind of thing, yeah. This kind of fucking infantile, oh, infantile, yeah. 
Oh, um, we had the same word at the same time. How about that? How about yeah, that? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but well, it is. In, it's, it's pathetic. It's it, it's uh, childish and adolescent. But that that was a thing, and they've just continued it. But in the in the latterly, in the last sort of ten years, it's not just that she had a sex life. It's it's also that she was secretly really a man or some fucking nonsense like that. Oh. But either oh. way, and we know what they're doing, like Cheddar Man and all this. They're erasing the past. And so the point is, as I said, that Hollywood doesn't have anything to offer. Uh, well, the same with the BBC, as you were alluding to. It's just pointless watching it now. Uh, mm. I, I am amazed that anyone still pays the TV license. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> I mean, what is that? Is if, that I, if, I see the new, if I see the new BBC for like five or ten minutes, at least the last time I tried to watch it, actually, honestly, it's been years, probably a couple of years. Last time I was in England at my, visiting my uncle, I think I saw, I, I saw it for five minutes. And literally within that five minutes, I saw tra dancing transsexuals and someone giving out about fucking women and darts or something. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, like I couldn't believe it. Like, five minutes worth. I was like, oh my God. Like, they can't even go like a minute without progressive shite. <laughs> so that was terrible. Know, so oh, dreadful. So uh, that is just dreadful. But yeah, I, I avoid it like the plague now. And, uh, <sighs> Well, for uh, the same reasons, I mean, we don't need to rehearse them. I've gone on about them long enough. Well, well there's still some good. There, I believe there's still some good BBC Four stuff, maybe on occasion. Yes, is that true or what? Probably. I, I always see BBC Four was very similar to Radio Four in that it was a middle class, stuffy, elitist, sometimes a bit pretentious, but better that than the trash on the other yeah. channels, you know. Um, and it was constantly in threat. Uh, of being, yeah, because the, the BBC would bring out a report that said, oh, BBC the Four is threat. too elitist, it's, it's too middle class. Uh, and so, yeah. well, there was always this stuff that they were going to access. Are, or, if your predictions are true. Sorry, go on. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. Sorry, I thought I was muted for a minute there. I, um, if your predictions come true, or like what you're saying there, if they both revise the past completely or take control of it, and we live in the vacuum where we can't tell what's true or not because of the AI, then there's literally, not only will they, it's not just a matter of them controlling truth and history, it'll become irrelevant. And we'll be like in a vacuum of like free floating atoms in our, <laughs> in our thinking in our, yeah. In a, in a way that we can't really fathom. It'll, it'll be not. meaningless, yeah. Maybe it could become meaningless. The history, well, meaningless. It could be whatever well, they, you... I mean, I don't know what a responsible, um, aware parent should now tell his kids about... Uh, and you you, you are a parent. I don't know what you, approach you have to this, but I, I just don't know how you would tell them, basically, son, you're living in a world of lies, and they're constantly, right. constantly lying to you. Yeah, I do tell them that. Yeah, and they can tell. Actually, they can tell. Right. Mean, it's not very hard. It's not very hard at all. They're like this. This that sounds like there's. It sounds like complete horseshit. And I'm like, yep. They're lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. I'm telling you, they can tell. I mean, at least my kids. Maybe because I kind of, you know, prepared them for it or something. I don't know. But you know, they have to. You know, they have to take a class now. Like my son has to take. My eldest is in. Um, what do you call it? Uh, like he's 13 or whatever, right? So he's, he's in a class where they, um, he has a specifically political class and the, he gets a textbook and on the cover of the textbook is like Greta Thunberg and like Trump looking like an angry dictator. And it's like, an, it's basically a class on how to be a lefty activist. As far as yeah. I know, they all get this. They all get this. Like they have a specific class now on how to be a, uh, a lefty activist. <laughs> well, that's the thing. There is an entire edifice built for leftist activism that starts, I guess, with things like that at high school, or maybe even earlier. And then they graduate from that into, you know, there are many ways into it as a profession, uh, as a sideline, uh, something to do at the weekend, something to identify with. And I remember in 2017, I, I was in the Netherlands, I was in Amsterdam, and um, I saw this feminist march and it ended in some park, like an open space, where they had all this entertainment going on. And I remember oh, yeah. realizing, so this is how the left do it. And I, we were still using that terminology at that time. I wouldn't necessarily use it now. But um, 
that this is how the left do it. They make it fun so that just normies get into it. They, they, they love it. It's a lifestyle thing. It's a hobby. It's meaningless. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and fun. Whereas what I'm doing <laughs> at the time was, um, was fucking dangerous and, and, and I'm not, you know, I don't want to over egg it, but it certainly wasn't fun. You know, it, it, and, and you certainly couldn't have a fucking bouncy castle in the middle of a, a park in a European city in the name of identitarianism or something. You know, it's completely unthinkable. A big, so, uh, scary, scary looking castle, maybe with people dressed as I don't know, Mussolini or something. It's just unthinkable. The, the disparity is astonishing. Um, mm. I, I, but what's even more astonishing is that they then, in their heads, it's the opposite where you and I have tremendous power and we are backed by Putin and uh, billionaires <laughs> and so on. While this, they, they nice? are, they're, uh, you know, on a shoestring, uh, they don't have any of the rich and powerful on their side. So I, I, it's stunning that they can believe this, but they seem to genuinely believe it mm. uh, to the extent that they believe anything. I mean, that word can mean different things, but that's a whole other thing. So, I guess that, that that's the that's something I noticed then, and to the to get back to the point, uh, there's this whole infrastructure there, and you can see websites where they uh, like very fancy, nicely done websites that are in multiple languages, and everything looks great. It's all oh, very yeah. very swish, yeah. you know, and yeah. uh, and it's about how to protest. It's about sharing yeah. tips, sharing knowledge, and uh techniques on how to do an effective protest movement yeah yeah it's yeah. absolutely incredible this whole <laughs> this whole thing exists just for what you might call the left and it's yeah. all the left i mean if you look at you know any, anything to do with our stuff would be off that uh website in a nanosecond um, yeah, well, just the fact that they can own even even as we speak that I can like say my son can have that class. And I know one actually know one of the teachers who he teaches that class. And I met her and I was talking to her, and I, and she mentioned it, and I was like, oh yeah, that one. And I, I made it sort of uh, understood. I find it derisively silly, you know, or whatever. And just sort of like my attitude, and she was just kind of like, oh, you know, uh, she didn't. Um, it's just hilarious that they would be to the point where they could have a class in leftism force taught in the schools. And just as a matter of fact, you know, like that's even beyond just having a fancy website. That's just like you're teaching the kid in a, cl a class. It's, he has to study. He has to study fucking Greta Thunberg or whatever yeah. the fuck it is and, and pass a test or something, I guess. It's I always tell him, like, do whatever. I don't give a shit what you do. Yeah, it's every classroom in the West. It's every lecture theater in the West. It's every academic department in every university in the West. Mm -hmm. And yet they believe themselves to be the underdog. Yeah, it was it's just it's astonishing. Really the obliviousness of them to, and it's just like the fact that she was slightly surprised. Like, it's funny because you do meet a lot of people that I do met randomly meet a lot of people who would agree with us and even just start these. I generally don't try to talk about these things in public, you know, and they, but they will start the conversation with you and they'll say stuff. And I know a Mexican guy with kids and he was, he just started talking to me about this, how his kid has to learn this stuff in school. He's like, what the fuck is this shit? And I was like, yeah, I know, it's bullshit. And he was pretty funny, actually. Right off the bat, he goes, you know, in <laughs> I can't say it on YouTube. I'll say a word that rhymes with it. He goes, you know, in Mexico, we still call them maggots. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the first thing he says, like right off the bat. I was like, ah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you meet a lot of random people, and it can go either way. And it's funny that the other, the ones that don't realize they must be getting a bit of pushback. They don't just can't just meet everybody and they get their opinion reaffirmed back at them. Everywhere well, they go. But I certainly don't see that. See, this is another, I can give you another prediction here. Okay. All of this will fall away overnight. If the money, if the comfort runs out, if the mm -hmm. comfort stops. And I've thought this for years. I still, this is one of the things that, because COVID was very much a watershed for me. I don't think it was for everyone, but it definitely was for me. It was an eye opener. I realized things that I just I'd been oblivious to before. It really changed my view of many things. But one thing it didn't change my view of was this: that all of the delusion 
the wishy-washy thinking among the public relies on them being comfortable. And if they're yeah. not comfortable, it will go like feminism will go out the window. There's a hilarious meme. Uh, it's one of those very sexist memes. It's like um, what women think they'll do when society falls apart. And it's like Lara Croft kind of thing. What they'll actually <laughs> do when society falls apart. And it's yeah. a bunch of women on a roadside <laughs> soliciting. And, you know, I don't that like is, that. That is pretty <laughs> racist. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hilariously sexist. Holy shit, that's funny. <laughs> and I'm not saying what it's nice, do. but it is true. It is just true. And feminism will just fall away. Like, if oh, yeah. once this kind of stuff cannot be sustained, once women have to rely on men for physical protection, um, all of the feminist nonsense will just fall away. Uh, I, I really do that's, that. that's one of my worries. That's one of my worries is that one will kind of stick it out somehow. It seems so ingrained right now. And in it fact, like to the point, it like to the point even where men, instead of resisting it, men act, most men just start, started to feminize themselves and become like women over the course yeah. of my lifetime. That's what I witnessed. I couldn't believe that uh, that uh, acquiescence, you know, to do that <laughs> instead of just standing up to them and like. Well, with I men, it's a, there's a whole thing there where men want to please women, and. Also, most men are apolitical, and they really don't want to put their head above the parapet, and mm. uh, you know, be be the only guy in their friend group who, because men are very social. I mean, we always say women are very social, but men are very social as well, and especially normie men, they will not do like the normie guy yeah. will not do something that estranges his normie mates from him, because he does, he true. needs them. He's human, and it's it's understandable, and. What that means is that you know what, what you've seen the memes. You 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 talk about this a lot on your channel on Telegram. Uh, the normals. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes, I bitch about them. Yes. Yeah, they, I mean, they really are kind of retarded. They don't oh, understand fuck. so much. Yeah. So if there's a hilarious meme of the guy. Uh, he's saying he's like a guy standing at a barbecue, and he says, "Man, that's crazy. Did you see the game last night?" <laughs> Yeah, that is how it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can tell exactly them something like very significant. And so, no. uh, oh, I remember being, hey, recently I was at a wedding and I got, I was at a wedding and I got wasted, really drunk. And I was, I grabbed one of them like this and I, I said, look, it was a kid. <laughs> it was in his 20s. And I said, listen, buddy, I'm going to tell you something that's going to change your life and you'll remember it for the rest of your days. And I made this big dramatic and I told him about the, uh, Disparity in uh, IQs broken up racially, <laughs> this kind of nonsense. But I, I explained it to a fine detail and what it means exactly. And uh, his response it was, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, and how's the game? But it was, it was kind of like a shocked, I don't know how to describe it. Sort of, I could tell he was sort of glazing over, like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> at least he, he didn't react badly, anyways. But I, 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 bet, he, I bet you he will remember that. <laughs> Whatever Maybe. he thought of it. Maybe it will Maybe. become relevant uh, in the future <laughs> at some moment when you know uh, his house yeah, is I'll burning probably down, his life down the road. I probably saved his life down the road somewhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twenty years from now. And... <laughs> Who knows? It, uh, you know, once he becomes in the, the like this position of Michael Douglas and falling down, <laughs> then he'll remember what Aureus Press once said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, he doesn't know me by that name, but yes, maybe he will. That guy, that drunk Canadian guy with the beard. <laughs> He had he such ranting. wisdom. But I think I picked I him up too. I grabbed him. And I like, <laughs> he had such wisdom. <laughs> he had such wisdom. <laughs> I did, though. It's so obvious when you... Well, shit. I mean, maybe we shouldn't talk about that. Maybe that is racy for YouTube. I don't know. But Well, whatever. so yeah. so that's one... Uh, to get back to the prediction, I do think that a lot of what we regard now as sort of titanic and impervious to reality the thinking that most people have it seems completely in, unbeatable invincible well i don't think it is from both because of the force of circumstance that like real reality coming in but also because we know how malleable they are again this is covid it really woke me up to that um they're and this is the thing, they really don't care. I mean, they're, they're perfectly happy. The, the normies, the normals, as you call them, are quite 
quite happy to totally contradict themselves from one year to the next. It does not bother them. <laughs> yeah. You know, you and I yeah. might be yeah. thinking, hold on, <laughs> I've just totally contradicted myself. I'll have to work <laughs> that one out. Uh, but for them, it's nothing. It just doesn't <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so true, true. It makes them very malleable. And, and so if, like, so for example, if a government got in that just started saying, you know, it's actually all right to find brown people disgusting, then it's, it sounds incredible now. But I can easily imagine norm normies just going along with that. So it's something that's completely at odds with the, well, you know, the, the thing, yeah. fashionable thinking today. And I, I, again, I can imagine me being the guy who's trying to get them to be reasonable while they're you know, Points. going way off in the other direction and just being completely, like, insanely racist. Um, I, I can well, easily imagine that. After yeah. COVID, all bets are off. Well, yeah. I, I actually even know, I think, how to control them if you really wanted to. And it's really, all you have to do is, I call it the Alex Jones method. You know what? I've been really into watching these shows about cults lately. I don't know if you've been seeing any of these. I was going to show about shows about cults. You see, there's a few on Netflix. What's the last one I saw? Was it Raylon or something? What's the French guy that has the his logo is like a Star of David with a swastika in the middle of it? And he's all about <laughs> aliens. I don't know. <laughs> he's all about aliens. So you, okay, you watch these shows and you see how these cult guys get people into cult. It's so easy. It's so fucking easy. All you have to do is be sort of like relatively charismatic. Um, if you want to just, you can get them to do anything you want normals you they will cut off their dicks in a second if you are relatively charismatic you have a message that is uh somewhat spiritual something to do with you know sort of quasi religiousness usually you mention god and do this these are are the edicts of god what are, what are the other criteria shit um i mean those are two of the big ones right there <laughs> Char charisma uh, so we, and a quasi as uh, religious sort of aura. Yes. So even say like Alex Jones as well. He has this huge audience. I'm, I'm the big part of his whole thing is that he's every now and again stops and rants about God or something, right? You, if you have that part of it, as well as sort of just generally ranting and having some charisma, you will get them to do anything you want. And then these <laughs> appear to me to be the criteria, <laughs> some of the main criteria. Forget everything else. Okay, if you want them to do mm. stuff, and we'll get them to do anything. But again, I think this is a an effect of of the luxury, the comfort that we live in. So oh, people, I think people have been like this for a long time. time. I think people have been uh, like that I, since. I'm yeah. I'm sure I, I'm sure they are. They have been. But I think in previous times, it couldn't just be any old bollocks. It would have to have some connection to their what they perceive as reality, because otherwise they'd be thinking, "Well, hold on, my three kids need food on the table tomorrow." Um, yeah. I, I, I just think people would have been more better. practical. Surely, don't you think? Normals? Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure, honestly. Watch some of these cult shows and see some of the people that get involved, the things that they do, and the reasons, and tell me what you think. I'll, I'll send you a list of them afterwards, some of the ones I saw recently. I watched like three or four in a row. I see. The Raylon was the last one. But like, I'm it just, it, yeah. About six months ago, I saw this thing. I don't know what it, the connection was, how I, how I came upon this, but it was a guy in the 90s, well healed, you know, well put together. I think he was older, like in his 60s, maybe. And uh, it just seemed completely reasonable. And um, he committed suicide for a cult. I've forgotten his name. Uh, but yeah, it was one of those. Was... Yeah, sorry, go on. No, no, some of them do seem smart, like intelligent people. It's the people that get involved that fully fall into it. Um, yeah. You know, it was funny in one of them. There's one of them about a girl, a new age woman. She basically ki dies because she um, keeps eating uh, some kind of silver, some kind of uh, byproduct of silver or something, and it actually turns her body gray, and she looks freakish, and she dies. And um, at the end of it, there's one, there's one guy in the cult who is a tunneler, let's say. And he uh, takes all the money and runs and leaves them all high and dry. <laughs> <laughs> and like nobody, nobody, uh, nobody other than us would notice this this uh, this story in the. But I noticed that right away. I was like, ah, that guy. The guy's last name was Silver himself or something. Whatever. No way. Yeah, yeah. He took all the money and left. And like, 
But of course, in the, in the documentary, it's just like, oh, this one guy, he just randomly took all her money. But, um, oh, but she had a large following, and this woman, totally nuts, new agey, fucking like dying because she's so crazy. And basically, oh, she she live streamed every day, ranting about you know, do this. I have a message from God. You must do this. I don't know. As long as you're forthright and um, have a sort of supernatural message, honestly. I'm just saying, if, if you can speak in a kind of supernatural way with an extreme confidence, you will get them to do anything you want. I think that is the only, I don't know why or how that works. I mean, God knows what they are. I don't know what the fuck they are. Normals, this is why I always rant about it. I find it like a, <laughs> They're like a foreign species. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of are, you know, because really, how inconceivable is it to you to contradict yourself that way and not think anything of it? Is it not like really? Uh, yeah. Really, really hard to understand, like uh, alien I, fucking. I know. I I remember trying to get a guy. It was after I uh, the whole Rotherham thing broke in 2014, and I was shocked by it. I just couldn't believe it, and um, I was telling some guy about it, and he and he said, "Yeah, but what's this got to do with us? It's hundreds of miles away." Oh, Jesus. I, <laughs> yeah, and and then yeah. he also said, "Look." If it's that big a problem, the government will deal deal with it. They'll do something about it. So we don't need to know about this. We don't we don't need to care about this. And I'm not caricaturing. Right? Those weren't his exact words, but that definitely the gist of it. And um, yeah, we so we don't need to know about it because the government, if it's real, the government will do something. And um, that again, it's, it comes back to the comfort thing. You know, he thinks he has the comfort to believe that. He he thinks things are sane enough that he can just trust, rely on the government. Yeah. But the government facilitated all of this. And it's not just that they didn't do something to stop it. They actively helped it to happen. So the normal in this situation is just totally out to lunch. You know, they, he's got no idea what his own government, how evil his own government are. Yeah. But he still can't. He, they work off impressions, as far as I can see. They have impressions of things that remain constant for them, even when very obviously the thing they're even referencing has moved on or is doing something totally opposite. They just still work off an overall impression they have of a thing. It's like it, they really react strongly to symbolic things. Say, if you, you know, <laughs> how can I say this? This sounds stupid. I don't know why this popped in my head. Say, if you went to a park and gave a speech on a hippie speech about flowers, but you wore jackboots, <laughs> let's say. Right. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like they would, it doesn't matter what you say. It's irrelevant. You know what I mean? This yeah. Is a, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I know what you mean. It's, it's a very emotional, uh, emotional and superficial. Uh, the impression yeah. of things is all important with them. Yeah. So in, in, in your future world of AI, information freedom and revisionist history they are the perfect stock livestock i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the, i know the thinly veiled contempt <laughs> but i know what you mean it's like well this is what they're like so who's this fucking person albion they keep bad mouthing and like who the fuck is that delete how do I uh, ban user and delete their comments? There we go. With a name like Albion, you think it'd be a bit fucking better than that? Well, but. I can't actually see the live chat. I didn't think to uh, to do that um, because he's it, like, it he's like, he's, send me, send me goggles in the comments, and he made a few comments, and he's like, "You look like a fudge packer, just like just like Colin or something like that." And I was like, <laughs> like "Red, <laughs> angsty." <laughs> I like it sounded actually meaner than that though. It, it didn't sound like a joke. I was like, okay, fuck this. Hopefully it was. Oh, Sammy so you're you're man. Sammy Ogog's asking to be made a moderator. That's a good idea. Oh, that would be a okay. good call. He's a he's a very trustworthy guy. Is he? Okay. How do I do that? Shit. Let me have a look. God, I can't even remember now. I think it's ad moderator. Know. I've never I've never done that. I'm in um StreamYard right now, so oh yeah, you'd have to go to YouTube to do it. But um okay. All right. Yeah, so to get back to uh, predictions, predictions. I mean, one thing is, and this is the scary thing for me, is just that the mass immigration continuing and continuing. 
Ireland for me looks like the best right now. It looks like the, the most likely place where this is going to be uh, resisted and probably very possibly stopped. Uh, and I don't think it will be pretty, but I can see it. I, I do think that Ireland looks like the best bet. In terms of um, things like remigration, I also think, uh, well, no, that's that's an interesting question. I would say Sweden possibly, because I think the Swedes probably have a, a forthrightness that is just under the surface and is, is quite, you know, controlled. But I think if it does explode, it will be extremely effective. I think they will be extremely effective at dealing with a problem. Um, the same would be true of the Germans. But I think the French are the, the nation that look like, like, for years now, they've seemed like they're on the, <laughs> they're the on the edge of a precipice, you know, just about to explode. Yeah, they have, yeah, for years, yeah, decades, yeah. And you wonder, yeah, you know, because you can say, well, yeah, but it's been like that for years. And yeah. yeah, but if it's been like that for years, that doesn't mean it's going to go on for years. It, it might, but it, it could mean that, well, they are the closest now. You know, that they're far ahead of other countries in, in that uh, that trajectory. They have a weird way about it, though. They're different. I don't know. They're almost more successful in a way with their multiculturalism, at least in a kind of temporary shitty way. But I don't know. Like last Pat time, it was there, like a complete dump at this point. It, it is. It's a dump, and they've trashed everything for sure. But at the same time, they've kind of they have a certain level of caste and racism still there in a certain weird way because they have the excuse of the revolution, where they're still ultimate. It's like when you know, it's like when Stalin basically asks, acts like the pharaoh. The ultimate fucking emperor of all time and space, but he can do whatever he wants because he represents the people's party and the workers' party. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like that. The French have their egalitaire. What's their fucking thing? You know, um, libertaire, uh, egalitaire, egalitaire, egalitaire uh, yeah. yeah. So because of that, they feel like they're at the progressive end of everything they do, even when they're being a little bit sort of right wing. I think, and they kind of. <laughs> keep things in check in a certain bizarre way, but it's still ultimately dysgenic and they're going downhill, but they've, they're doing it in a different way. And I don't know. They do I, seem I, very I, different from the rest of Europe. I've got to say the French yeah. seem quite unique. Yeah. I mean, they're not like, um, like Sweden, Holland, Germany, Austria, and then the Mediterranean countries. There's a certain, camaraderie with between all of these countries and with the anglosphere but the french are so apart from all of this and i'm not saying it's totally true or that i like this i'm just saying it seems to be the case that they're very much in their own world yeah they definitely are so what do you think is the let me ask you this what do you think is the future of in the immediate future or the near future of the world wars that are going on right now well i <sighs> I mean, people say it's uh, nothing ever changes, but but things do. You know, these things do happen, and we have had two huge wars in the last century. Uh, I, I think it's a mistake to think, well, it's just never. Gonna, and you know, I don't think anyone actually does think that nothing's ever going to happen. It's, it's, but it's a phrase that I think we can rely on too much. Um, eventually, again, it's like. <laughs> It will continue, and it will continue, and it will continue until it can't, or or just doesn't. Eventually, it is going to change. Um, so there is going to be something. You can see a possible setup for it. You know, Russia, China, ver and maybe India, the the BRICS versus what we fondly call the West. Mm. That. That looks, you know, with a, with a, a moribund America at the head of it, uh, you know, the United States, I mean. Um, um, Britain as this lapdog, uh, like, lapdog to a fucking fusty old drag queen at this point. <laughs> tragic, really tragic. Yeah. We're, not, we're, not oh. even, we're not even the drag queen. The you're, like the, uh, you're like the, you're like the, what's the Down syndrome drag queen? The, uh... <laughs> 
is pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, what I will say is it does seem like the British Secret Service are, are still extremely good at what they do. Oh. Oh, so yeah. On that, I think Britain does, still really does rule. Yeah, they're the best at that. But in every other way, I mean, the Navy, the Army, I mean, they're tiny at this point. They're tiny. Didn't they, didn't they, didn't they launch a sub recently and sunk right away or something like that? Am I wrong? <laughs> something happened like that. I, mean, I think it was, um, oh, God, there, there was a, an incident where a ship, yeah, I think it was a ship sort of reversed in a harbor and into a submarine. <laughs> and it, it was just like, you know, like carry on Royal Navy sort of stuff. Just yeah, yeah. Farcical. Into a, into a submarine, Jesus Christ. I That's think bad. so, yeah. If I recall correctly, it was about two months ago. Yeah. Um, That kind of stuff. But, I mean, I, and I'm sure that there are still experts. I th I'm sure that there are still very, very well-trained, very competent men in, you know, like the, the elite units in the army. I don't doubt that. Uh, and you know, there was a hint that we might have been involved with Nord Stream, you know, the the bombing of that. Nothing would surprise me. But the thing yeah. is, it's one thing to have these elite units. It's, and I'm not saying this is any, you know, I'm not making any pretense that I know about warfare. But nonetheless, just as a layman, the point is, it's one thing to have these elite units, these great, you know, highly trained operators. But you can't fucking fight a war uh, just with them. You need massive numbers of men even now and people think well this is the the next world war will be t totally technological cyber warfare that kind of thing and drones but again you've seen in with the case of ukraine that the conflict there for the last two years that actually a lot of warfare still is you know it's a guy in a trench it's a guy in a, a bog uh with his leg blown off it still is very it still is very physical, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So the point is, Britain. <laughs> you know, I can understand why they're saying they're making these murmurings now about how we've got to beef up the armed forces. We've got to maybe have national service back, conscription, because even if you weren't predicting a particular conflict in the near future, you'd have to admit that if there is one, we're fucked. We're just fucked right now. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, are you not concerned about the nuclear uh, business? Because that's a fairly major concern. Of if it's fairly well, major concern of yeah, at that point, it is just... That does wipe out all of the heroism and the honor and the warrior and all that. It's a flick of a button and everyone... It doesn't matter how well-trained they are. They're, they're just gone. So, yeah, because yeah. as far as... I, it's a, it's a two-tier thing right now. Because you said... Because you were saying, like, the amount of men you have is still irrelevant. But it's a funny game we're playing. It's a funny chess game in the world because it's like, that is relevant, providing everything depends on the level of escalation the other person is willing to go. Because we are dealing with superpowers that are basically at war right now, I think, more or less, right? Yeah. And the level of escalation you're willing to risk in terms of possibly nuking the other person possibly nuking the entire world and killing everybody because that's the ultimate final threat of, of of the world war at this scale so providing you are nobody is willing to go to that point then men and materiel are of ultimate importance but it's only based on the geopolitical moves or the strategic moves like the fact that I think everyone sort of thinks that maybe Iran now has nukes. Possibly Russia gave them, Russia gave them nukes in the Israel-Iran conflict. And that sort of changes that whole scenario quite a bit, right? And mm. even, even the fact that Israel has these nukes supposedly aimed at all the major cities of the world, should they go on the, uh, what do they call it, their Samson option, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that's fairly, <laughs> that's fairly shitty thing. <laughs> fairly <laughs> terrible, uh, you know, and what's... The, you know, so if they go under, if something happens due to their own heinous uh, activity, they lose themselves as a country. They're going to like their last breath is going to for hate's sake. I spit at thee. they're going to nuke every major city in the world. I mean, is that what we are to believe? They're, or... they're a light into the nations. They're just a tremendous people. And Israel is a wonderful country. And, you know, a, a, a demise like that 
uh, well, it would be an honor for the rest of us, wouldn't it? Fabulous. Mm. Some people would say that. Some people would be saluting as the nuke drops on their city. Some normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably still be stuck in their barbecue while it <laughs> comes yeah. in. On How about the game? How about that game? <laughs> I mean, his last <laughs> words. <laughs> they might as well be. Their whole lives are this fucking shit. Doesn't? <laughs> oh God, that is grim. But anyway, <laughs> well, that's a whole thing. Uh, okay, so Israel. Uh, I'm going to be very careful. Well, no, well, that's well, that's part of the. I mean, that's a major uh, event in our in our lives now in terms of the future oh, yeah. you might say like what's going to happen what's the result what do you what would be what would you predict is the end of that uh, conflict well i think it's uh endeavor is a, a youtuber and he just put up something on telegram earlier he said in fact i'll get you the exact wording because i thought it was very good he said a major failure of the zionist lobby is their inability to make support for israel appear reasonable or sincere <laughs> It's 2024. It's clear as day that everyone under the age of 50 who supports Israel is either Jewish themselves or paid to do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, much. And he was talking about Tommy Robinson as it happened. Oh, fuck. But, you yeah, know, that guy, yeah. That, You're right, yeah. That's, that's a whole thing. Oh, um, Jesus, that guy, yeah. Isn't he getting, like, uh, isn't he in some trouble? He's getting sued by some dude? Oh, I, I, he is, actually, what? because it, it's something to do with, it's amazing, it's hilarious, actually, because he <laughs> uh, he attended, uh, as I understand it, he's being sued by Jews for being anti-Semitic, for attending right. a protest. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was on their side. <laughs> yeah. But because he attended it, well, they don't like that. So they're suing him for being anti-Semitic, something like that, where he's getting sued by his own so-called allies. That they would even try to sue him for that. It's so funny, though. I, 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 I don't. What, I, what a great ally! Oh yeah, yeah, uh, greatest ally. But the, I mean, I might be misreporting it. I hope I hope I'm not. But it's it's something it's yeah, something funny happened. like that. So right, okay. anyway, um, so the long and the short of it is, the Gaza thing. I said this all through Millennial uh, a few months ago. I think right. that it has changed things in a big way. Right. I think there was already a generational problem, uh, generations, um, youth, uh, everyone under 50, basically. I, I think it's very, there's a sort of watershed where the boomers really believe in certain events and they really believe in Israel. But then everyone younger than them just doesn't really. And that even includes Gen X. You know, what Gen X care about, the, you know, the lefty Gen X, what they care about is tranny stuff and LGBT. They're not Zionists. Um, then same with the millennials. Zoomers are just completely nihilistic. They don't really care about anything. They don't believe in anything. So right. you can't get them to support Israel. And then you've got the whole angle that they'll see it as a white country. So it's white imperialism, white colonialism. But that's a whole ironic uh, I should tell you I, I, after this after the stream, I will tell you what my my son said. One of his uh, fellow students said to him today, and it was like I was absolutely I would loved it. It was amazing. I can't I can't say it on the stream honestly. All right, I can't okay. even allude to it. It's so bad. But like randomly to him, basically because of this war. All right, and, right, right. Yeah. So well, it's really it. And this is like a, not a uh, you know this is just like a normal probably leftist person. I don't know. I'm not sure. All right. Okay. Well. well um. So yeah, th so there was always this problem, and it was it was boiling under the surface. It was going to be, it was destined to become a bigger deal in the future. It was always destined, and we it's really been a, a noticeable thing for the last five years. Maybe if you're very perceptive, which I wasn't, it would have been perceptible before that, you know, ten years ago. But either way, over the last few years, it's really been there, and then. And what I'm talking about is that younger people just aren't invested in the Holocaust or in Israel in the same way that older people are. Yeah, that was the case. And then the Gaza thing started in last October, and it's turbocharged that uh, change in people's views. And um, I think sympathy for that group has just massively dissipated uh, compared to a year ago. 
and definitely oh, five years ago. Uh, uh, unbelievably, I think like it's more than ma massive. Doesn't even cover the word. I don't think it's like uh, profound. It's, it's downing. Like it's <laughs> you know really yeah. uh, very large. Yeah. Yes, very much. Yeah. And I think they know it too. I think yeah. that yeah, because there was the guy. What was his name? Go not Goldblatt. Or is it Goldblatt? <laughs> the uh, ADL guy. Goldblatt. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't, can't remember how stereotypical he is. Not for him. He looks like fucking yeah. a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> he literally exactly. looks like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> the head yeah, of the ADL. So uh, charming. He's, yeah. Yeah. Well, terrific. Um, he was, he said this. Uh, and I think, I think he, he was saying it before the, the Gaza thing started. Oh, but either way, maybe it was after. But he said that we've got this serious problem where the young people just don't care. They're just not invested. They're not buying our message. They're <laughs> they're not on board. Um, and as anyway, the point is that Gaza has made all of this much worse, and and that group haven't adapted well uh, because it's a sea change. It's it's really the first time in. Well, since 1945, that they've had to come up with a new narrative for why people should sympathise with them. So, and and there's so much evidence that of them I doing. They, I, don't bad think, I don't think they can. There's no way yeah. to, is there? When they're bombing no. children and like, um, there's no way. I don't think. And and then also another factor in all of this is Elon Musk's Twitter, because as someone said uh, around about early November. Someone said, if it weren't for Twitter, the narrative would be at this point that Hamas baked 20 beheaded babies in ovens or something. I can't remember what the, the claims were, but it was something like that. And yeah. someone was making the point that the only reason that like the mainstream media were parroting this, the only reason it got defeated was Twitter. I don't know if that's true exactly, but I suspect there's a lot of truth to it. So, Probably, yeah. yeah. So that's a whole other thing that we could talk about um but first let, let me just finish the the israeli thing um yeah. i do think that zionism and but and attached to that the um special status of that group in general not just in terms of zionism but you know in general is has taken a huge blow um especially because of gaza but even before that yeah so and because younger people are not invested in the mid twentieth century, it just it's a foreign land to them. Uh, to, well, to to us, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't identify with that that era. It's got nothing to do with me. Um, I, it's not part of my life. It, it was decades before I was born. Um, I'm far more concerned with what's happening here and now to my own people. And as I've often said, if even even if the very worst version of that story is true, it still doesn't mean that we should go extinct. It still doesn't mean that European man should go extinct. So it's uh, it's something that is just losing its purchase on people. So that's one thing. And then to get back to uh, Twitter, for years, as you'll know damn well, we were the victims of censorship, deplatforming, oh, defunding. Yeah. It was a fucking dreadful time for all of us. Um, it took a toll. It ruined people, some people's lives. Um, yeah. it, awful, awful time. And uh, I've said for a while, and I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to reiterate it now. I still think this, that we have reached the, or past the peak of censorship. You know, people were, I remember I said this in Millennial, and then in early January, there was an attack on Substack. And, and then I thought, oh, fuck, did I speak too soon? Did I get this wrong? Not that I terribly care about getting a prediction wrong. I mean, who really gives a shit? It doesn't matter that much. But nonetheless, um, it turns out that Substack hasn't cucked to that, uh, again, that certain group um, who were laying pressure on it. Now, it might be that they'll just turn up the heat and they'll say, look, Visa aren't, or MasterCard or whatever aren't going to process your payments unless you start doing censorship in a big right. way. That's what they did to Patreon back in the day, and it worked. Maybe the same will be done with Substack. But 
again, I think it would go against the green. If they didn't know... I mean, for some reason, they got away with doing all of that stuff in 2017 to 2020, 21. Somehow. And yeah, I know. People that didn't experience that, like, that's the one thing. Because I still get like people uh, comments from people like well, you, sort of like why don't you speak your mind more or whatever like you weren't there then <laughs> when, when you got so punished <laughs> it was like holy fuck really I can't even say that something entirely reasonable and you'd be like so so punished oh, yeah. they they are willing to go to extremes to uh, to silence you I'll tell oh you yeah right now. yeah oh yeah I you, mean they don't fuck don't really, your life really. really. yeah. Um, they'll destroy your livelihood. It means nothing to them. And this was a big thing where I remember people saying, oh, they can't do without us on YouTube. They, 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 they're they, not going to get rid of it. If, if we all withdraw from YouTube, that'll show them, that'll teach them a lesson. And I remember thinking even then, come on, they don't give a fuck. It, it, what, what we are like less than a tenth of a percent of YouTube traffic. If we all disappeared tomorrow, it wouldn't make a dent. You were a big target back in the day. You were the big target. You were you had a well, big one of them. I, I mean, yeah, I was well, one but, of them. Yeah, but you were, uh, you were very good. Your little your little original YouTube channel. I still think of it fondly. The, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was good. You were sort of. Uh, it was. I don't know. You, you've been thoughtful, kind of. Uh, you know, you didn't just have anything. It could be any old thing. You would just you know your musings or whatever. Mm, mm, that that day, was I, the I, idea. That was the yeah. idea, definitely at the start. I think. I mean, yeah, there's a, a lot that I could say about that, but it's tangential to, to this. But um, what was your what was your following at the at the height of it? How much? Um, it, it was just under fifty. I think it was just under sixty k. It was like fifty seven, something like that. Right. That rings so a bell. I mean, it would have been easily in the mil millions if you were left alone. Easily. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, let's see. No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to say that I would have had millions, but I would definitely have oh, had you would have two, three hundred k by now for sure. Yeah, oh, you would have had millions. There's no doubt about it. No <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> I think my stuff was quite niche, and I, I wouldn't make any pretensions about that. I mean, I it was very, especially early on, which is the stuff that I'm most fond of, where I would just switch on the camera and chat to the camera. You know, that was nice when it was relaxed. You like that I the best, yeah. Yeah, that's Sorry? that's what I hate the most. That's what I had to do because you were late, and I was like just talking here in my shed. It's like yeah. I'm talking. I, I was like I'm alone. I'm like muttering to myself like an idiot. Yet at the <laughs> same time, you know I'm not, and all these people are <laughs> watching mm. me. It's too bizarre. I don't. Uh, I need to have someone to talk to. Yeah, I I, yeah, I, I can know. understand that. So some people are good at just talking to the camera. Other people get freaked out by that, and they feel like the spotlight's on them. And yeah, I I understand. Um. But yeah, the, the channel, uh, I mean, it's funny how attached you can be to something. And then years later, it's just something that happened once. And I obviously I have fondness and I'm sad that I lost the channel. Sure. But you move on and you adapt. You have to adapt. Um, a good example. Well, no, I won't say that. But there, let's just say that there are people who don't adapt well to losing youtube and, and there are oh, people who what, what do they do well just they they, they can't deal with it they, they, i don't want to name names because it's, it's it's bitchy but um i think some people I, the point i'm getting to making is that I, I hope that i adapted well to to losing youtube because it is a big deal it's oh, a did. big blow oh, and yeah, you have yeah. to change um if you try to continue as if you were still on youtube it it wouldn't work. It would just, it would look kind of tragic. Like you I know, used YouTube to really is not, YouTube into... is not so relevant as it was. YouTube is not a, uh, you know, it's well, just a, it... yeah, that's a big, that's a thing too, that YouTube is not as central as it was. Um, I agree. Um, but for a while it was the place. And you know what, you know what, you know, what's my big, big, big uh, concern right now is that they might, if they decide to ban um, TikTok, right? Yeah, is that they might move from that onto uh, banning Telegram? Telegram yeah. is now a massive. I mean, I think it's the sixth most used platform in the world. Well, I mean, so it's, it's, I mean that, that they don't care about that. They would care about that, controlling information, right? That's that's true. But at the same, it's like the same thing with crypto, right? I don't think they can get rid of Bitcoin at this point. It's too ingrained in in oh, people really? in too many people's lives i think the same is Maybe. true of telegram 
Oh, um, really? Okay. Really? I think so. Maybe maybe it's naive of me, but this is what I think. I don't think well, you can really. Uh, you could sanction it in different ways. Well, look at the measures they went to in 2016, 2017. Yeah, yeah, but they've tried that with with Twitter. Yeah, you know, since Musk took over, and it hasn't worked. Uh, hasn't worked against Russia either. <laughs> but if they do ban, if they do ban Telegram or um, TikTok, then I, I would be slightly worried about that. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. With this. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. I, I, it just, it just feels to me like it would be against the grain at this point. As I said, for some, for various reasons, they got away with it in that first round of you know 2017 to 21. I don't. It, it would be interesting to sort of enumerate what those reasons were. What were the circumstances of that time that enabled them to be so openly draconian and shameless about it, proud of it, and sell it as a public good? I don't know. I just think that people aren't aren't really amenable. I don't think they buy that anymore because there's there's so little in contrast to 2017. I think now there is a lot less trust in. And yeah, normals, normies are going to be normies, sure. But there are a lot of people who were normies then who aren't now. And I think a lot of people just don't buy it anymore. Um, now, for what that's worth, I'm not saying that that means revolution or whatever. I'm just saying I think enough people noticed that it doesn't, it just, it's just not a good look we've, we've, to, to be censoring people all over the place. To be defunding people, to be demonizing like another stupid dumb hit piece that everyone knows is just a hit piece. It's not a good look. It it actually looks like a regime that's panicking, flailing, can't deal with its opponents seriously, like adults. They are though. But they are um, they are in that state. They are in that state. And that doesn't mean they won't use a more oh, hard yeah. power. They might well if they're debating banning TikTok. It's not that they um I saw this on another podcast recently. Someone, someone else said this, but it was—it's not that they um, hate that the Chinese are spying; it's that they, they are themselves are not spying on you. <laughs> yes, of <laughs> course they're not the ones. That, if that's what they hate about it, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they must have the same feelings about t Telegram, specifically with it being so popular and so forth. But yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, but the thing is, they've had those reservations about Telegram for years now, and yet nothing has happened. Maybe it's maybe true. it will happen. Maybe something will happen. TikTok, um, that's the Zoomer platform, really, isn't it? I mean, in a way that the others aren't. It seems to be very much. A, I mean, I've never been on there in my life. Um, it seems like it, it seems like in these social media things, what it, what whatever the young girls gravitate to, it becomes the master. So recently, it was <laughs> it was Instagram. I always hated Instagram. Yeah, and I don't know if you ever if you ever used. I, I, mean, I did. You, know, you did it, like it. You did like it for a while, didn't you? you, you it it was kind of like a sideline, especially after I lost Twitter. So it was kind of right. fun to have right. Instagram instead. Yeah, it was a new thing yeah. for me. Yeah, no, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't know, but I I, I was never that into it. But um, and that's really what the, the ladies are into, and they uh, you know, even to the even even to this day, my wife is like, look at this thing on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, I saw that fucking you know six months ago. And it's always the same kind of, uh, but they love it. And um, if something that young girls are <laughs> into really <laughs> rule, rules the Western world, as far as I can see, if whether it's fucking Taylor Swift or fucking TikTok, it oh, seems God. they have the purchasing power to get those consumerist capital bucks rolling or something. Yeah, whatever. Well, it's also that's the, the, that's the demographic of the ultimate it's leader the of the world record. artistically. Well, yeah, it's also that whatever girls are, boys are going to follow. Uh, so if you get well, the girls on well, Instagram, it used, it used to be that way. It used to, they used to make stuff specifically for boys, like st all the good stuff that we used to love, Star Wars and fucking uh, you know, oh. or that I, I loved heavy metal and things like this. You know, they don't bother with that anymore. Now they just sell stuff to the girls, and the boys just have to pretend to like it to approach yeah. the girls. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so with TikTok, uh, yeah, they. They might want to. They might bring it under control. I think they definitely want to bring it under control. Um, I guess if that did happen, I don't know. I can imagine it becoming sort of neutered and boring in the way that Facebook is. You know, no one really takes. Again, everyone just thinks of Facebook as the boomer platform at this point. I go back to Facebook all the time. I still have a, like a large following on Facebook, and I go back there uh, uh, like all uh, recently because well, I became. 
I yeah. stopped. I stopped posting anything political on Facebook for like a year, and finally, it was like I, my reach was back, and I just <laughs> go back to that. But I just like post there. Mm. It's actually, I have great, I have great delight in it. To be honest, yeah. Look, and there, I, I, there are diehards. They're diehards, like good people that never left Facebook. Mm. Yeah, I'm not slagging it off. I'm just saying it has a oh, certain well, reputation. I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't even mean to defend it. Just saying that. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, I. You know, I, I'm still on there for some reason. I, uh, they haven't I'm touched wood. Man. They haven't shut we, down. We, we, we must start talking on Facebook like old. <laughs> <laughs> well, did 2010 style. <laughs> yeah, we must talk on Facebook. We could guy, do that. There's a kid on here earlier, Ashin. Uh, he's I talk to him on Facebook all the time. Like that. actually, most of my 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 buddies here in Ireland, I talk to on Facebook. Still, I don't know why they still use it. But that's the mm. preferred one. Again, I think it's something that a lot of normies are on there. You know, it's not mm. like political types. It, it's it's something for because politics never really went well with Facebook, and that was a mistake that I made back in the day. I used to before I had my channel, so I didn't have an outlet, so I would just rant on Facebook, and it never went down well. And <sighs> I've ever, I've ever listen with my all my like aunts and my you know relations and my even my work buddies. I remember at one point, I think in 2014, posting a meme that was like a picture of Hitler and it said it was like a picture of Hitler on a newspaper and it said, Area Man does nothing wrong. <laughs> and I just randomly posted that's, that. It was that's <laughs> pretty based. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it was a hardcore. That's <laughs> really <laughs> just. Out in the open there. <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> You're right. Well, it, 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 is, it is a bit out in the open, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a bit much. Of course, different yeah. standards, I should, though. I shouldn't even say that now on YouTube. Yeah, different standards. Yeah. No, no. We're no. not. Even, we're not in the realm of prediction so much anymore. And even well, what? Um, I, yeah, I but wanna, I wanna get, okay. So, like, when I mentioned the war, for instance, what do you, what do you think is the re going to, to be the result of the war? Right. Well. Okay, so that gets us. So, okay, all right. So, TikTok, Facebook, okay, TikTok. Um, I can see why they would want to get uh, get it under control. I don't know if they will or not. The censorship in general, I do think we've reached the peak of that. I might turn out to be wrong. Who knows? The war, I do think that Israel and that group in general have taken a blow to their prestige, to their moral authority. Uh, that that was it's very different from a year ago at this point, and I don't think they're going to get it back. I don't see how they can. So that in turn has implications for war in general because yes. that group and tends to be, yes. you know, uh... we're talking about hard reality, hard reality future here. Like yeah, predict what you think is most likely, not what you would like to happen. Or oh no 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 no, it's not what I would like yeah. to happen. I, I, I'm just saying what I what I. I'm just surveying what I see uh, and listing it. But if you want me to come to a conclusion, like, do I think there's going to be massive war? I think it, at the very least, there's going to be localized, like, serious conflicts. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if there is going to be a big war. I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if we are in World War Three uh, five years from now. You actually said on Telegram the other day that. Um, that we're in World War Three already, even if the even if it isn't a straight trajectory and you know it ebbs and flows, we are now in World War Three. Yeah, I do believe that. Yeah. yeah. It, well, what? When, why don't you go into that? Yeah, I believe we are on a war in two fronts: in Ukraine and uh, now in uh, Iran or Israel, Israel, Iran, and the Middle East, I should say. Um. And yeah, it's basically, it is the same war. It's See, two this fronts is the thing. With, with Iran, they bombed the embassy. And everyone yeah. knows that they bombed the embassy. But yeah. And then Iran retaliated. And now, but Israel is now playing the victim. I mean, yeah, but the fact that the fact that Iran had the ability and the means and the wherewithal and et cetera to, to retaliate means they have entered the game and the game is afoot. Mm. And that's it. Yeah, you know, even, I agree. Even, even I think today, I believe Israel launched a few, um, what are they called, uh, drones towards them. But it was just a show. 
And that was just a pr- performative show to, sh- to say that we have retaliated in some fashion. Uh, but See, really, no, they're they're scheming. They're scheming some other major, major retaliation. Now See, that war is afoot. I, yeah. I believe there's, you know, that's uh, that's what I would say. See, there's but, a there's a thing here which is hard limits. I mean, Israel might well want a war with Iran, and uh, God knows who else. But and they might well be. I would guess in that situation they would be counting on American support and backup. But America is not the country that it was 20 years ago or, well, even five years ago. It, it, <laughs> it's not as wealthy, it's not as comfortable, it's not as confident. Uh, it's got nothing to do with who's in the White House. It's just in general. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a shadow of the country it was in 2004, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So how, for how, to what extent can it back up Israel in this kind of stuff and enable it to take on its neighbors. Uh, is that even feasible anymore? Look at look at Ukraine. Look at Afghanistan. Uh, also, you might say um, Syria. I mean, it it, it didn't defeat uh, Bashar oh, al-Assad. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, such a great guy, such a great little guy. Uh, but it's but, funny little. Don't yeah. I mean that that seems significant now that the hegemon? I mean, I guess you could say, well, they didn't. They have not even Vietnam done actually. They, they have not even done actually a very good job against Hamas, to be honest. They have not defeated Hamas in uh, mm. Gaza. It's going on. It's it's still yeah, going on. They have on. not. It was not just a walk in the park. No. So that's another thing. But um, see, for me, there's a perpetual double-edged sword with modernity and future prediction, which must act against each other, which makes it very hard to predict. You you touched on it earlier already, but it's like, say when you, when you mentioned the AI stuff and um, technology, and greatly changing our lives, that is all that is a force at work. But at the same time, against that is their belief in um, how do I put it? Uh, affirmative, affirmative action hires and you know diversity and uh, foreigners and women basically in every aspect of the workforce or you know. Uh, basically, dysgenic, everything that these great forces that technological forces, which seem almost limitless in their power, are going to come up but against their belief, their value system, in that we must have um, these these technologies were, were created by basically European men, and we are forced out of the system of their management. And yeah. they are going to fail. Well, at, well, as, well, at, well, even as they increase in their power, they are going to yeah, 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 begin yeah, yeah. begin to fail. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a it's, there's a positive and negative working at the same time. So which is going to win out? I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Well, look at the Titanic sub thing. Uh, there was the, the white men have been pushed out of all of these sectors for years and years now, and even the guy in charge of that Titanic sub had said, I don't know how serious he, he, he was when he said it, but he said this stupid thing about was it useless white men in their 50s or something. And yet, when the shit hit the fan, who did they call out of retirement to try and save the day? It wasn't some fucking lesbian or like the tranny or whatever. It, it was white men in their 60s and 70s that they tried because they know that they are the only ones who can do this stuff. So this is what I mean about reality uh knocking at the door a lot of the the walkery the feminism the the woolly thinking i i really do think is just going to be chucked out uh as soon as it can no longer be afforded and the titanic so sub i'm using that as an example but i think it is i don't i don't think so i think we're going to get a, get a convergence of the high technology and it's failing in the people that are trying to maintain it and so that then conver- you end up with like the sci-fi cliche where it's a high High tech society that none of the residents can actually control anymore or maintain. No, but all all our predictions are going to be based on that failure point. Is it going to high technology is going to find a way to defeat the um, inferior thinking of the people that hired to maintain it, or <laughs> the people hired to maintain it are going to ruin it? It won't function, and we're back in the dark ages. Mm. One, of those, one of those two things is going well, to happen. 
yeah this is the like with ai where you've got feminists and uh you know gay lgbt activists <laughs> trying to control this is, a, this is definitely a very racy chat for you too <laughs> Oh, sorry. Our, uh, our entire no, but our entire excuse is that it's a prediction. Oh yeah, this is dire predictions of our oh, future okay, that none yeah. of us would ever want. Oh god. Um, no. Well, but yeah, the the, the blue haired types are in control of AI to some extent, to a great extent, and they're retarding it as you would expect them to, because they want it to align. They want its thoughts to align with theirs. Illogical and insane though those are. So. So they're retarding it. But then again, you've got rivals to AI, like this grok on Twitter, Elon Musk. And again, I don't want to keep going on about Elon Musk because I think that he is showing a way. He's blazing a trail there. There will be more Elon Musks in future. They won't be as big as him probably, but I think we are starting to see a pushback against the Silicon Valley set, that the Silicon Valley mindset, actually. Um, because it is just, I keep using the word moribund, but it is at this point. I mean, the last great thing that Google did in terms of a step forward was the, the Chrome browser, and that was 15 years ago now. Um, what, I don't really know, what have they done since then? What innovation have they, have they, have they unveiled? Um, it, it feels like a, a stultifying force now, Silicon Valley. So there's going to have to be it's over. a replacement, so, something that you sharp said. And um, that's going to be guys who can just, and it's going to be guys who can just get the job done uh, without all the fucking workshops. But, you know, at, at the same time, lesbianism. You, you, you assume that though. I, I just don't, I think that uh, the commissar element of like, no, but white men are not allowed to work in this industry kind of thing is going to only increase as well at the same time. So that even though they are the only ones who can, solve the problem they will be forbidden from from entering so the their problem arena. so the problem will just have to remain unsolved and that's yeah. just too bad kind of thing because I, I, ideologically the only ones who will maintain the ideology are those people who cannot actually make the machine function as it should in terms of uh, its total autocracy and control over the the people so, so you mean it's like the mediocre the mediocrities are going to keep things mediocre because that's what they're comfortable with. They don't want excellence. Well, they're going to want to autocratically turn everything um, towards their value system. But their value system inherently makes their work uh, inept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dysfunctional. So yeah. I don't know. There's a, must be a, there must be a place where that finally but comes I, to a head. See, I think that's the same in other sectors as well, though. I mean, if you look at, I mean, this is going to be, I'm, I'm trying to be diplomatic in my wording here. So, Wokery makes AI inept. It makes it subpar. In a similar way, you could say that Wokery makes TV dramas shite, which it does. It makes entertainment in general shite, whether it's video games, Hollywood films, Etc. Everyone is un uh, underwhelmed, disenchanted with these things now. Um, even looks, um, lookery, uh, but like what Wokery makes women ugly, it, and then you've got the whole you know transgender thing as well. These are not attractive specimens. Um, quite the opposite in a lot of cases. Um, there's a sort of cult of ugliness, which you know. There's only so far you can sustain that. I mean, I do th see in a sense, I guess I'm kind of like Winston here. I, I do believe in the human spirit. I do believe that people are, they do want beauty, even if they're, you know, the normals. Um, oranges and lemons, said the bells of St. Clement. <laughs> oranges, oranges and lemons. At any rate, it, even if it's not the normies, because yeah, the normies are malleable as hell, they're, they're sheep, whatever. One way or another, people who who have the wherewithal, who who are movers and shakers, who can actually, you know, who've got some will, they want beauty, they want function, they want progress, and um, the question really is: Do they want it just for themselves in the billionaire echelon, or do they want it for people in general? And I think I'm sorry to mention him again, but I think that Elon Musk actually does. He's got this. 
very woolly, nicey thinking that a sort of democratic libertarian bent to the to him. He, he does. I think he does have fondness. Well, for the, okay. Uh, look, I I see him this way. Look, he's a genius. He's like a Asperger is kind of autism genius in terms of engineering and um, finances and or uh, business, let's say, right? But he's an absolute naive child in terms of his sense of humor mm-hmm. and his politics and certain, you know, as, as yeah. is typical of someone of that of that type, right? They have a certain their other side is sort of childish and underdeveloped. Yeah. So in that sense, that's how I see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that seems accurate to me. But again, it's not. We shouldn't focus too much on him because he isn't. He's not. I don't. I don't believe he's. He is going to single handedly reinvent the West. But I yeah. do. As I said earlier, I do think that he's going to show the way for younger people, and people of his own age, to follow in his footsteps and break away from a paradigm that at this point is just totally bad for us. It's totally it's breeding dysfunction. It's promoting dysfunction. And I think there's only so far that that can go, practically speaking, and there's only so much of it that people can tolerate, spiritually speaking. Uh, again, not so much the normies, but I think that people with wherewithal just will not be content to live in that world. So the question becomes, again, will they escape it on their own just at that level of society or will they alter it for the rest of us as well will they create some sort right. of new way for you and me for example to escape the swift money system or will it just be for billionaires this, this i think that's probably a, a key question here it is key in terms of the near future in terms of our predictive uh, uh, what we're here to do prediction like I was thinking more ultimately of the long-term predictions, such as would Elon in say I'm not even concerned about what he does with Twitter or or other things so much as his rocket program and his aspirations for Mars. Will he somehow reach humans to Mars? And yes, and now, not necessarily think, in his own lifetime, but that I'm certain that will happen. I don't. Well, think that, be... so if. When I said to you, we must force ourselves to predict f- the future, I thought I applied that to myself. I thought, do I honestly think that we will do that or not? And I thought, maybe uh, I honestly think that considering his drive and his ability and how far he's come, that maybe he could achieve that. But it would be some shabby progressive thing where he would send like three lesbians and an Arab to Mars and. <laughs> Maybe they'd survive there. I don't know. Three lesbians and an Arab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Some stupid fucking thing, right? <laughs> and, and so back, well, meanwhile, back here, we, but I do believe we are in for a bit of a dark age. I do believe in Evelyn's prediction that we are in for a bit of a dark age. And when Evelyn said that, it wasn't just, you know, he was r- remarkably prescient himself, I think. I, whenever I've uh, read his, his works i always think oh fuck that guy really really was on to something and he wasn't he he was in this he died in the 70s so even at the point when he was like everything's going downhill it was still slim it still looked pretty rosy to me mm. but he very accurately predicted what we, we would be living through and according to him if he's correct we don't just have to live through a bit of a downturn and a uh, reversal and a dark age there's a stage beyond that where we have to live through a kind of spiritual darkness. I've said this before, and uh, it sounded pretty uh, grim. And I don't know how long it's supposed to last, but I can see it. If if every if you look at nature, this is what this is the message of Evola and Spengler. Really, you look at nature, you look at your own life or the life of any living thing. It has its uh, golden age, springtime. It lives, and then it has a denouement, and it dies slowly, and then it's gone. And its fertile, its body becomes compost for the next generation, more or less, right? So the period of that, yeah, I guess I must admit I'm a, a perennial, perennialist, and I believe in this. And that um, exactly how much of a downturn do we have to live through would be 
the way to accurately predict the future. And I don't, I'm not so sure, but I can see it. I can envision a future where perhaps there are people even surviving on Mars while we here on Earth are living through, have regressed to a point of much lower technology mm. while they're in, in their absence. And we are sort of surviving in a more primitive scenario. And I, I can see that almost as not even unlikely. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I guess the, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see this. And I, I think that the, it, it comes back to this thing about how much can we stand? How much can we sustain? I, I, I do think that by the end, like, for example, by the end of our lives, uh, I don't think that things will have got markedly better. Uh, I, I think this is going to take centuries. I don't think that it's right for, for right now in the next, for the next few decades, this next century, the question is not, uh, when's the next golden age going to come? Is it going to be 10 years from now or 20 years? It's obviously going to be centuries from now. So the question for now and for our lifetimes is what who is going to be the or, or or what is going to be the mechanism by which we will get through this dreadful time ahead and we haven't even mentioned <laughs> in all of this we've been talking for an hour and 50 minutes and we haven't even mentioned demographics and okay. that's right. the most I mean, again we're on youtube so i'll be careful but let's just say that there is a approximate cause in our midst of disaster and misery and dysfunction uh, and you know, civil unrest uh, and so forth. Um, there, there's a reason to not be terribly optimistic about the next 50 years in Europe. Um, so so the question is, what's going to happen? I mean, that's a whole other thing. I don't know if you even want to get into that, but what's going to happen there? And again, I think this hinges on what I said earlier. Are there going to be are there going to be white people fifty years from now, or hundred years from now, right. uh, and in well, what I mean, numbers? What numbers will there be? Will there be a million of us? Will there be that is the main question? Uh, that's the main question that concerns us. Really, is are we? Um, I believe that. First of all, let me just say, Dave. Uh, Dave Martell sent us a super chat. Thank you, Dave. He says folk futurism is high. Automated agrarian micro micro communities. Hold on, I lost it there. Um, versus grim dystopian mega mega slum slides. Mechanurge renders moderately obsolete. <laughs> Mechanurge, okay. Oh, the uh, some kind of uh, AI urge, like a demi urge. Perhaps he's talking about. I don't know. But yeah, no, I I believe you're right. But um, sorry, what what were you saying there? <laughs> Oh, it's complicated, but I, I said no, that, they, 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 I, I definitely had something very specific to say. What yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll just go through it again. I said, um, uh, are we going to survive? Is European civilization or European, oh, that was it. Yeah, know, yeah, the yeah, European right. people, yeah. are they going to uh, survive? Well, How many of yeah, us will there be? Uh, that is really our, our chief concern as pe people of our understanding, really. And it's yeah. not a small concern, and, and it's a concern that anybody would be granted to have in a normal time and space, uh, you know, obviously. Are they going to be allowed to exist in the future? And um, yeah, and as far as prediction wise, I believe we are going to lose uh, a lot of ground in the near future. And I don't believe there's any easy recourse out of the kind of immigration that has occurred. Nations are going to be redrawn. And um, if we are lucky, yes, we will continue. Probably because. It's not not an easy thing to completely exterminate a people like they're trying to do. <laughs> it's not so easy to do to the last mm -hmm. man, right? Mm -hmm. So, I also just think but, that, uh, that our own instincts. Well, I'll be right back. You 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 keep talking. I'll be right back. All right. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. So if I if I comment now, he won't hear what I've said. So that's rather annoying. But I, I'll, so I'll just say in the meantime that uh, I hope everyone's enjoying this and it hasn't been too all over the place and ramshackle. Um, 
if there's anything that I didn't pick up on from the chat, if you want to type it now and I'll uh, I'll see it and bring it in. I don't know how much longer we're going to go on for. Maybe I, I would I feel like it's winding down. I'm thinking we're going to be maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, that, that's my that's my intuition. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, if people want to say anything uh, I can respond to, then I'll do that just now. Um, I don't know exactly what he's... Uh, I'm guessing it's the, the call of nature. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it's really last name. Oh, he's back. Right. I wouldn't even say it was going to last that long. Jesus Christ. I'm actually fairly drunk, and I have to get up early in the morning. Would you All right. Up? Hold on. These lesbians... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Three lesbians and an Arab is the natural <laughs> sequel to four four weddings and a funeral. Oh, I was yeah, thinking they're... three men and a little lady. <laughs> someone should make it. Someone should make an ironic movie. Uh, someone should make an ironic AI movie about uh, Elon Musk. He's eighty years old. He's finally sent it's people to Mars, and it's three lesbians and an Arab. And the Arab <laughs> goes crazy and kills two of them, and the last <laughs> lesbian is left fucking surviving on Mars. <laughs> As you look back and the, the earth turns into a dark age, you know, <laughs> wouldn't that be a great movie? Uh, that That's would my be accurate pretty, prediction. Pretty for the um, so what was, what was I, we were saying about, oh yeah, so I think that people, there will be something in born in us that will resist the decline, the, the degeneracy. But I also think that, uh, yeah, but the, 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 so those people are going to need a space of their own, right? If they're going to yeah. control their own lives. Yeah. Right, so it's going to be it's going to be beyond the fucking uh, Scottish National Party. It's going to be like zones where oh yeah, that are predominantly this or that, randomly based on who was sent where. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, not not based on what is historically is this or that. Mm -hmm. Am I? I hope I'm making sense. Am I making sense? Yeah, right. I'm like the, the the sort of random allocations done by some NGO computer yeah. in 2020 yeah. might have dire implications for life of or border time. borders of cunt nations yeah. in the future yeah. 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 yeah 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 it's kind of scary um so but another thing here is that that kind of amplifies this effect of if people are uh resisting or, or some people are resisting this in the future which i think they will be something that will amplify that effect is the syndrome that I mentioned earlier, whereby some white people now and in the coming years resist miscegenation. Because the mm. ones who will resist it, that, that's going to lead to a strain of You're right. You're right who are yeah. very who are who have very high in group preference. You're right, yeah. yeah. That is going to be something. That, that will prove to be something. You're right. Sorry, go on. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just no, no, no. Uh, so, and then the ones who mix, of course, are the ones who don't have any in-group preference at all. <laughs> They're completely retarded in that regard. So mm. it's not actually much of a loss. And and yeah, there will be. And yeah, women are very malleable in general. They're very alive to social signals and and all that. Um, so there will be tragic losses. There will be. I mean, it's going, to, it's be... going to create a bottleneck of preciousness. Yeah, exactly. It exactly. will, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. It, of like true, um, desirable. Yeah, shit. Yeah, well, one of the selection pressures in that bottleneck will be how much in-group preference do you have, for for want of a better phrasing. Right. It's so at the end of that, you're gonna you're gonna what? end up with masses of miscegenated whites who don't know their arse from their elbow, who are, and are and frankly, a lot of them will be low IQ anyway, and and even before the miscegenation, um, it will be the dregs of the white race who who go for that basically is what I'm saying, and then a lot of the ones who don't go for it, and you see this already. I mean, it's. <laughs> A lot of the ones who don't go for it will be high IQ. And I, I think this is largely playing out even in, even now, where it doesn't tend to be the bright, the, like the, the intelligent white women. Well, what, what about like an Asian, high, high, what about high IQ Asian uh, breeding with like a midwit kind of uh, 
you know, white guys and stuff. Well, Where does that well that, that's a thing as well. Um, so what would that result in? I think you would end up with low T middling IQ dullards who aren't going to really do fuck all. I mean, they're they're going to be sort of in, culturally impotent <laughs> in the future, but just because of their nature. <laughs> right. Okay. So same thing, right? Yeah. Ultimately the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I would think so. I mean, they're not going to be imaginative. Well, they're not going to be high test or like assertive. For, well, you know, you know I I, uh, I went and taught English in Japan at one point. I nearly had a Japanese, uh, you know, not wife, I guess, but uh, you know, it can happen by accident. Oh, I know, and yeah. I'm not. You know, I don't. But you're I, right. It, it, we're talking about averages. It, your feelings, your personal clear. experience, mean nothing. I, I don't even mean to be uh, anecdotal yeah. in that sense. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. No, you're, um, you're totally right. But, there is, yeah. I mean, either way, we can see that the results of uh, th these marriages they, they tend to be guys who are quite uh, timid and just not. I mean, they're not the you know, the, yeah. They've the gone there because they could, they could not succeed with a white woman. <laughs> exactly, which is a tragedy for them, of course. Uh, yeah. But in a lot of cases, that is that's how it is. Um, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's just sad. Um, so yeah, the the point is, I I think as much as there will be decline, there will be an increasingly concentrated form of resist, like genetic resistance to it. It will be minor at first. It will be in, in, increasingly minor, but increasingly concentrated. And uh, and then a few hundred years from now that will begin to blossom and take over again, I would think. Hmm. So it's a long-term genetic plan based on... See, my own prediction would be that the war, the wars that are currently set up will end in some sort of low-level nuclear exchange at some point. Maybe not the full blown, hopefully not the full blown thing. And whether or not Musk has succeeded on send, in sending people to Mars, if he does that, if he somehow did that in the next five or 10 years, I don't think he will. In terms of this is just my predictions, right? That would make an enormous difference in the future of things. People would be inspired by that. They would see that. They would think in terms of humanity and expanding into increasing the biosphere. And that would change events dramatically. But I, sadly, everything is timing in this world, in this changeable world, in evolution, constant change. That is evolution, the constant morphing of things into the next thing. And you can't control it. I mean, you can try it. You can maybe con we can control it a little bit. We can try to. We can husband it as much as we, as we can. But timing wise, I don't think he will achieve that in the next 10 years. And I think to, maybe, maybe he will eventually. And really, that's just how much yeah. it, uh, it, we, how much it, of the future relies on this single guy and how important he is. It, well, so yeah, oh, so uh, you, you seem to be saying that the basically the future of humanity depends on us going to Mars. Is that accurate? Yeah, I do. I believe that uh, if we do not expand into space, we will fall back and die out. If we do not increase ourselves. In the Greek concept, I believe in empire. I believe in expansion. And if you don't, do not have the self-confidence to uh, grow as much as you can, you don't deserve to, and you won't, and you will die. And eventually, if we don't have a frontier to reach, as they did in reaching the new world and uh, after the Renaissance, that uh, you will fall back and ingest yourself and die out and become something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's a hope for humanity only in furthering the frontier into space. And he's just about the only one who's still keeping that in his mind because he's a genius in that sense. Not politically, not in other ways, but in that sense, he is a genius. But um, this is, uh, in terms of my own prediction, I'm not sure. Will he do it in time or not? It's very close. It'll either be that we do expand into space or we uh, collapse back into a 
See, I, I I do agree in generally with what you're saying that we need to. I mean, see, this is yeah. We need to expand. We need to explore. Uh, we need to conquer. And if we don't do that, then we f we fall back and uh, into self destruction and self. Well, what's the term? Auto. Also, yeah, whatever the mm -hmm. auto faggy gynophilia, <laughs> gynophilia is it the when you eat yourself? No, no, auto it's just when you eat yourself. Um, yeah, so I think the word is auto faggy, but yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, if we don't expand, we will turn inwards and destroy ourselves. I do agree with that, and I do agree that space exploration obviously is our next frontier. I, I don't know if it is the only one. Uh, maybe scientific discovery in other fields could be the next frontier, uh, or you know, and a, a next frontier. Um, it, I don't know if it needs to be space exploration, but either way, there does need to be. I, I do take the point that there has to be something that that is the next frontier. Um, so I agree with you there, and I do think that it's certainly in the future we have to get into space. It's just, it just feels like sort of. Even though I'm very much uh, <laughs> tied, you know, very much homebody, uh, tied to the land, I'm very attached to Britain. Um, nonetheless, I think that for our kind and general exploration, uh, conquering the unknown is just intrinsic. It's necessary for us. So I agree with you there. Um, but I'm not Will sure about the Will time achieve it? Yeah. Well, the time, that's, will we do it though? That we have a sh narrow frame to achieve it before the um, increase of uh, diversity or the um, you know what's the what's the term um, positive discrimination <laughs> in every workforce mm -hmm. means we are incapable of doing anything basically, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's how far will idiocracy go? I mean, will it just? You seem to be saying that it will just go. It will. It will destroy everything. It will go that I, I far. It will, yeah. Eventually, it will. it will. Unless, unless, unless something reverses the value system. Yeah, it's going to be top down. This is this is what Evel has said. Is that we're working on a system now where we must elevate basically the slave to the point of being the emperor or king, and every anything in the way of that will be removed, and out of a spirit of fairness or equality or whatever it is, but. You know, nothing will get in the way of that until it is achieved. And he says, once it is achieved, according to him, I mean, I don't know. It's not just that, then you have to undergo that. And then a period of spiritual darkness, <laughs> which is a more further tortuous, mm. awful thing for like a long time. Yeah. It's yeah. You, go. Yeah. you know, so. Uh... And I agree. I see. I can see that as well. I, I, it's like it's one thing to struggle and fail and then fall apart, but then there is a necessary period of what would be the word? Um, doing nothing, languishing. If you believe um, in perennial, if you believe yeah. in perennialism, it's, it's a spiritual belief. It's kind of a religious belief, to be honest. In that everything is cyclical, and that everything has a life. It's it's sort of a re reincarnation belief, more or less. Let's say that you're part of the universe, and it works in cycles, and um, you know everything has its beginning, its golden age, its death. Everything, including ideas, I mean everything, and that is part of the what moves the engine of the cosmos, and allows constant change, which allows life and growth and everything. So it's baked in the cake let's say yeah and to, to be a realist about it is to uh but then again it's impossible to say is that absolutely true and it's also impossible to say where it where in the where it occurs inevitably in the system like where where can we resist or where can we say this is we can't just like resign everything is oh it's decline i give up <laughs> Yeah, I'm walking away, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, hold on. We have a couple of cyber, uh, fucking uh, what do you call them? Super chats, super them. chats. Yeah, I was saying, Dave Martell says, become pagan cyberpunk mafias. Yes, I agree. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Go on. 
Well, I, so what I do you think we, Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> we should become pagan cyberpunk mafias. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> Why not? I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> Might as well. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, it's so fucking complicated. I mean, th this is a whole nexus of different issues and forces that we're talking about here. Do we need to get to Mars in order to, to some extent, is evade or circumvent the? I think we do. I think we do. I honestly think we do. I, I, I um, honestly think we do. And if so, can it be done? And it, and if we if it isn't done, is that just it? Is that the end of European man forever? I, I mean, I don't know. That's to me, it it really comes back to numbers and genes. Do the genes exist in a hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years? Um. If they well, we do, might we, we might exist, but it just mean, it it just means that we have to go through the whole cycle again till we reach the p pinnacle of that point of ability to do that again and try mm. it again and eventually life. If we, you know, the British, what makes Britain great? The, your country, you know, it's not specifically the Scottish or specifically this and that. It's that they had the wherewithal to become have an identity that was self-affirming and confident and expansive and they became an empire the greatest since rome a great great empire that everybody loves <laughs> some pretend they don't they expanded outward and that is life if you are at the height of your strengths you absolutely should spread outward especially if you have a intelligent positive message and you know are full of confidence about it and as you should be so as nietzsche would say uh frankly the point of life if you love life is to grow and that includes increasing the biosphere as Musk says expanding human life to the moon mars the sol the solar system and then potentially beyond to becoming godlike because even if there if there's no gods existing in the universe which i think is highly unlikely i believe there are absolutely but whether there are or not we might as well we if there's not we bear a responsibility as a conscious bizarre form of existence to do our best to uh husband it <laughs> yeah well I agree, uh, and that is a it's a thing that everyone should. You know, it, it's kind of a bummer. It's like you've got to try, you've got to man up, uh, even in terrible times like ours, you know, the the age of new builds and stupid sitcoms and, <laughs> and diversity. Even in this age, it is your duty to yourself, to your kind, uh, and to Europe to. Uh, do whatever you can with it to make of what of it whatever you can. Um, I agree, but the the question comes. So what I was saying earlier, the question really comes back to: Will we exist on Earth? Like, let's leave aside the the space exploration stuff. What's the likelihood, though? I don't know because right now it's chancy. I don't, I, I wouldn't say it it's really like is. But again, it's it, it it's like how much in-group preference is there in the most closeted whites, you know, the, the most uh, secretly hiding their power level whites, uh, the, the people who aren't even really aware of the danger that we're all in yet. Um, how many of them exist? How many of them exist and, and have this strongly enough to resist the pressures that are going to be exerted upon them in the coming decades to race mix? Um, so the question becomes how many of how many of us will there be in a hundred years, two hundred years? That to me is the key thing. And as I said earlier, I think there is cause for uh, optimism here because I think that the end of comfort will change everything. And it's not going to happen. Obviously, it's not like a light switch. But the harder things, I mean, it's the it's the thing. Yeah, the, the harder things get, the more the strong men will arrive. They'll just be manifested from the the struggle of life um and then that is what enables what if, what if the game, uh, to follow. Like, like, 
my whole life so far, they've been maintaining the illusion of comfort levels by by sort of decreasing slowly um, various like, communities. A lot of people can't get a house now. They can't get on the property ladder. I mean, yeah, they can get a smartphone, but they don't. I mean, this is very real now in a way that it yeah. wasn't 20 years ago. That's true. You, loads of people who came from good families, nice, comfy backgrounds, are never going to have the comfort that their parents had. And their kids are not going to grow up uh, in a similar, they're not going to have a similar childhood to what they had. Uh, that's a reality now. It's hitting hard now. And it's not going to be any better at five years, 10 years from now. Um, so I, I don't think, I mean, yeah, the comfort, it will, it will continue in dribs and drabs, but it's clearly only going one way. It, 20, 30 years from now, it's not going to be the the West of the 1990s. Lord, um, Lord, Lord of Lex says, if Lauren Chen tries to breed with you, you are in trouble. <laughs> Lauren Chen. I, I think, I yeah. Mean, I mean, she's at least part white, right? You'd, be, you'd probably be okay overall. I mean, <laughs> worse options than Lauren Chen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, she, she is a uh, yeah, the, she, oh, she, she was uh, my buddy. On, she was my buddy when I was on. I was getting published on uh, Russia Today as a. I had a an op ed on Russia Today briefly, and she was my little buddy on Russia Today. But she never would fucking talk to me, you fucking bitch. I'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> we're on Russia Today." Like, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> didn't say shit to me. I was like, fucking "That's bitch. fucking weird." That's like meeting someone in one context and like on. As YouTubers, and then you meet them in a different context in Russia today, and they pretend not to know you. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. I was like, okay, fucking bitch. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't know anything really about her, so I'm not going to say anything one way or the other. She seems, yeah. she seems all right to me. Well, anyway, she seems lovely. Yeah. So, what were we saying? The. So yeah, so that it comes to that the the hard men, uh, weak men create bad times that mean i think is very true and of course the the question is but how long do these phases last at what point in what phase are we at just now uh that can be quite difficult to determine but i think we are definitely in a decline phase um the, mm. uh, we are surrounded by weak men in power we, have, we, we definitely is a, a period we have to survive yeah is the coming is the coming period for sure yeah Exactly, and it's definitely recognizable, and we can see it, and we must. Uh, one one uh, thing, actually, that I should say, as I know, a sort of upbeat note is, I do think that um, a lot of the newcomers in our midst. Well, first of all, I think a lot of them will be very controllable. Uh, I don't think they'll be that difficult to get them under control. Is what I'm saying. Because historically, that has been the case in previous centuries. Um, but also, I think a lot of them will just piss off of their own accord once things, once shit hits the fan in the West. You can see already that they're really not attached to it. Um, the thing that does attach them to it is interbreeding with us, which again is, I mean, this is why it's so. It's such a key issue for our enemies. They, they, they really want people to miscegenate because it ruins our self-image, destroys it, and it incentivizes the newcomers to stay through hell or high water. Um, it, it links us in, in inextricably. So, but again, it comes back to this, that I don't think, I don't think most white people want to race mix. Uh, even now, uh, I think most people still have the same icky feeling about it that that our grandparents had. <laughs> it's just that they're much less uh, forthright about voicing it. Maybe, hopefully, I just uh, just just even this evening, I was uh, I saw something about uh, tourism to Tunisia, and almost. The great forerunner of the tourism was um, older white ladies seeking toy boys from fucking stupid, yeah. stupid old <laughs> fucking. Wait a minute, the, 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 
they're they're beyond have. the breeding age, so it doesn't matter. At that point, it, right? Yes, except yeah. that those young those, those young men are not going to be, you know. Yeah, it, yeah. Know. If anything, it's yeah negative towards them. It's not. <laughs> it's well, no. What I mean is, those young black guys are going to go with uh, younger women once they're in the West. These stupid old fucking women, honestly. I mean, it, it, you could get so sexist about the stupidity uh, of of their choices and the destructiveness of what they do. Um, yeah, it's mortifying. But again, you know, it's not well, just I mean, them. Jesus keeps telling me I'm, we're not in the Kali Yuga. Well, I mean, maybe not. I and mean, the Kali Yuga is an abstract concept. Look, it's when you see Drag Queen Story Hour, I, yeah. We're in the fucking Cali, you guys. This is dread. I mean, this is very, very dark times. He says. He says we can't have the level of, level of uh, technology we have if we were in the Cali Yuga. But I mean, we. This is the whole thing I was saying before. The meeting point of, of the rise of our values versus the technology, the root of technology that it, it was on. Should we not have replaced everybody involved with somebody else? <laughs> um, you know. There's a converging yeah. point there where it will one or the other will fail. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which um, at this point, but it probably the uh, leftist um, diversity quotient aspect will fail, and techno therefore technology will fail. But I mean, I don't know. And it, the whole point of this was to make predictions and to be uh, well. We've reached a point at which it's very difficult to make predictions because we're. We're not talking about specific social uh, forces now, but ab about the cumulative effect of all these and what how they all resolve. And that's very difficult to predict. Very, mm. very difficult. Mm. I mean, yeah. we can say that there's going to be probably nuclear conflict, definitely civil unrest throughout Europe. Um, AI is going to be a huge thing in future, just part of daily life. These are predictions that I think you can quite safely make, but predicting whether the white race will ex exist 500 years from now is a very diff uh, much more difficult prediction to make because it's it relies on so many factors that are yet to play out, and they're big, big factors, like huge, powerful social forces. Um, so it's it, yeah, it's extremely difficult to work out how that will uh, resolve. Yeah, it's uh, if, 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 I if I was if I would say if I if, if I am forced to say one or the other, I will say that yes, we will survive, and so will I. I, I do yeah. believe that. And I, that. I also think I, I also think you've just got to believe that because even if it doesn't rationally seem likely at this point, if you don't believe it, <laughs> you're going to be in despair. I mean, I think it's it's one of those things where. Uh, you, I don't, I don't mean lie to yourself exactly, but I think you should prime yourself for for a better future instead of giving way, you know, surrendering to uh, oh, inevitable despair. I think you've got to believe that we can make it because otherwise we just won't. Yeah, we. I do believe actually that to fully exterminate an entire race down to the man is extremely difficult. <laughs> Especially when they've you look at what they've done an amazing that. job so far, an amazing mm. job, uh, just recently. But that's yeah, fully, but again, uh, that's complete, the context complete that job is, is a major, major task beyond, yeah, and especially because the ones who remain will be ever more resistant. So, I mean, they're not going to give way because they saw some fucking stupid advert on a train on the side of a bus with a blonde woman and a black guy. 50 years from now, the whites who remain will be impervious to that sort of conditioning. Uh, you know, otherwise, you might, you, they would have already have given way. You might like this story. Of, uh, it, it, this reminded me of a story. A friend of mine once, um, I, had, I found some, we were, um, to be honest, we were high on acid, like completely high. And I found some dice and we were in a pool bar or something. There was a pool table there. And I said to my friend, I said, I'm going to roll this dice. I was feeling this is in my youth. I was full of bravado. And I said, if it's one to three, that means there's no life after death. And if it's three to six, there is. And I threw the dice on the table. 
And what do you think it says? <laughs> <laughs> six. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember the number, but but it was three to six. I do remember that. Because at the time, <laughs> and at the time, I was a bit of an atheist, and I was confused. I was like, "What?" But I I remember it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm late. gonna go because it's late, and you we're gonna. I think you these people have had enough of our predictions. I think we've accurately described all possible futures that they may certainly be concerned about. I hope so. Yeah. I think we've definitely touched on a lot of different factors, and uh, it's been a really very uh, animated and interesting conversation. So thank you. It's yes. always quite unique with you. It's not. I mean, I know this isn't millennial. It's like we're it's different, different context and all that. But I always find that our conversations are quite, quite different. Yeah, it's because so, you're a smart um, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean because of you. <laughs> Every time, I, I never hesitate. I mean, I've always thought you were good, and you were a great influence on me back in the day. Oh, Your little fun. channel on YouTube was a great, was an influence. I mean, I was like, "Wow, well, yeah, he's right." <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, he's right. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was like that. So there you go. Well, so thank thanks you. for coming on, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, Mike. No? Okay. All right. All right. Everyone else, see you. See you later. And there's your future. You there's your future. Mark our <laughs> words. All right.